Let's drop right into our exclusive of the week. This one goes to Julian Cowler and Ioban. Here's their collab time, then stay tuned because right after this is our uncaged spotlight of the week with Tokyo Machine.
in another week, but we'll be not. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Collegiate Star League's Week One Dota. I'm our cryptic Carlton. How you doing, buddy? We made Ricky, it. Ricky, I could not possibly be doing better. I am ecstatic to be back with you tonight. And second place, people, I'm here to be ha happy to be here with tonight. Tell the viewers, the thousands of viewers watching tonight, the teams that we're going to be casting. Oh yeah, it's a uh, just. Not like your no names here, right? It's gonna be your boys from Stony Brook University. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm All right. Mm hmm. The grand finals, grand final LAN event last year, and oh, mm, the year before. Oh, yeah, they did were they there make too. It twice? Two in a row, baby, and that is why they are here for the first match of the season. Mm hmm. But uh, who's their opponents, right? We I've heard of these guys before. Who? What? What's? I hear they drive buses or whatnot. Yes. Here comes the school bus, baby. It's Rutgers. But this is not a normal school bus. No. no. This is not an orange one. This is a jet-fueled, rocket-powered school bus, and they had the biggest upgrade possible. Storm Soldat graduated, and they got to replace him. This I hear that's a has huge, never looked that's a better. huge buff. I hear that's huge. a pretty big buff. Almost overpowered. Honestly, I expect it to be nerfed. I can't even believe it's in captain's draft mode. Captain's <laughs> mode. Yeah, that's one of the things. One of the things. Um, yeah, it's week one, Collegiate Star League, Dota 2. This is the match, baby. Oh, so excited. We There's so much to talk about and so many things that we can go over. Um, mm -hmm. I think we can well, kind of just... you want me to start? Yeah, I think we can. I wanted to mention. Oh, So not only it. is uh, SBU going in, this is the same team that came to land last year. Uh, and Rutgers managed to lose Storm Sold at. Great upgrade, if you ask me. Uh, for our first match, once again, we have returning Dark Raider from SBU, a hot shot. But honestly, actually, who do you think? Would you, could you, could you put the spotlight on one player on SBU? No, or are they a team? Not. They're a solid team. Like every single player on SBU is really good. They I, are I don't good. think they, they, there's not like, there's a couple teams I've seen that have like very, very like high skilled players, but then it's, like kind of counterbalanced by having some like legend or some ancients on their team. But this is a team where all five players are incredibly skilled. Oh no, and dude, the banners. Same with Rutgers. Oh God. All right. We're going to transition <laughs> into the game here so y'all can see this. This is, an, this is, uh, this is wild. You're, I, mean, I agree with you. I agree with what you're saying, but the banners just hit me, dude. I was, I was, I've been ready for this oh, match since I heard that we are casting the number one and the number two teams in CSL at the moment. Early in the season, though, we'll see where it goes. It, and and of all the things, Carlo from last year would be appalled that I forgot about the ridiculous banners in the CSL and like. <laughs> If, <laughs> if we're back part. at it again, boys. It's the best part of CSL. Let's be let's be frank here. The banners are amazing. One of the I benefits of not having like a real sponsor, right? Yeah. Speaking of sponsors, do we have any CSL sponsors going on? Ooh, fancy? we do. We have uh, our newest sponsor, GameStop. You know, Ooh. Pretty solid. Very much so. Of course, uh, CSL, for those of you who are new here and you don't know much about CSL, we are the world's largest and fastest growing collegiate esports league. We have over 1,800 campuses that participate in our games, 55,000 players. 55. 55,000 players. How many players y'all got? Not that many. Mm. It's a lot. We have a lot, a lot of people. It's a lot of fun. It's a great a lot community. Of players, a lot of good banners. Carlton, how'd you get started here? Where did you, where did you become part of this community? <laughs> 
<laughs> Ricky, you flatter me even asking, as if right. everyone doesn't know how I got started in the CSL. Let me let me kick it on back here a couple years. 2014, you know, it's your boy Carlo playing Wilfred Laurier University. Look it up on the site. 2014 Grand Champions. You know what was the first place prize back then? Like $500. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Razor Black Widow Tournament Edition, uh, baby. Dude, I'm still I'm using it. Using it to this day. That's amazing. Five seconds, Morty. Now, Grand Finals. I mean, uh, we have... we. Brought it out to Atlantic City last year. Land finals. $30,000. Uh, $30,000 US, by the way. International tournament paying in that, that valuable money. One it's thing, incredible though, that, that how much it's expanded. I love it. Shout out to CSL. I, we love you guys so much. For real. This is the best place to be for collegiate Dota. And some may say Dota in general. Oh, I I'm one of Dota them. In general. I'm one of those for sure. For sure. Uh, <laughs> speaking of great Dota, though, I was wondering, do you notice the first ban from Rutgers and the banner from Stony Brook? Any relation? So let's start with the banner, right? For those of you who don't know, this is Shu. That is his actual <laughs> face uh, with some That's sweet glasses. Uh, those Undying. are his actual glasses. The only hero that he has played in probably seven years is Undying. <laughs> his love for that hero is undying sorry i had to go for it oh my god give me out you do you want to kick me you just want to do the cast by yourself i'll leave no sorry. Fine. It was i can't season. do this without you <laughs> um i guess we can talk about the draft right that's probably a good place i guess to start. we can get into the game all right, all right, all right. I'm, okay these these picks and bands i'm not sure how much everyone's been keeping out with dota right now what's real hot real sexy and sweet in the dota universe are these great saving heroes. So you'll mm -hmm. see right now, Abaddon, banned. Legion Commander, banned. Peace. Shadow Demon, banned. These Get heroes, out of my game, Shadow Demon. Oh, these heroes that offer like a really solid save mechanic are very, very, very good right now, Speci uh, specifically from the off lane. You just wanna like basically sit behind a hero, farm nearby, and just make sure that your, your, like, your core is not gonna get ganked essentially. So it's, I'm not surprised to see those bands. Kunkka still incredibly broken. I think easily top three best heroes in the game. And it's Dark Raiders. It's it's like one of his best heroes. It's Absolutely. Not. Dark Raider loves that hero. Thing you got to know about Dark Raiders, you give him any hero and he's going to give you a match in return. That man is insane. I agree. I 100% agree. So going into what we do, rather than looking at what we don't have, what do we do have? We have some AoE stun. Sand oh, yeah. King and Earthshaker, those heroes also offer team fight, and both of them are quite strong in lane. Oh, Decently strong in lane. They have their issues. Ooh, okay, okay. I like this. Speaking cool. of heroes that have issues in lane, Bristleback for me has Ooh, been a man. coin flip in my experience. However, the coin is two sided. They do in have the theory, Zeus, actually. I like the Zeus, because this I, I would say this is going to be a support Zeus. Because um, the, the, I, the, I would assume the main reason they picked him up is Blink Dagger canceling here from Earthshaker and yeah. Vision. Um, yeah. And then also like helping set up team fights for Sand King. But uh, if it's a it's a four position Zeus, it's pretty decent in lane if this ends up being a core bristle, like one position. Yeah. Um, but bristle's flexible, and that's what I like about the hero, right? He, he does he is really weak levels one and two because he's not super tanky. But what but, happens at three? Yeah, at level three, he starts having a little bit more he that has he can a button work with. that he gets to press, and he likes to press it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I agree. As, uh, picking up Zeus also denies the True Sight from Lightning Bolt for yeah. SBU, so which is going to be something that Sand King doesn't want to play against. Being able to actually like hide in Sandstorm makes him a real hassle to deal with in team fights and in lane. I will say the one thing I cannot understand is how Void didn't get first rounded here. Like Void, it wasn't picked up, and most of the counters in the game were already removed. The only one left would have been like uh, Winter Wyvern, just because of yep. the Cold Embrace. Well, so yeah, with the saves for yeah, uh, Chronosphere. like all the saves were removed, so it makes it very difficult. Um, but it looks like uh, SBU kind of expecting the same thing with this Zeus that it is going to be a support as they do ban out the OD. This would be a phenomenal OD game just from the start, just already. This would be a great OD game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and he he also offers a save, offers more team mm -hmm. fight. Exactly. But you were uh, mentioning the position one uh, Bristleback. Yeah, I think it flexes. You can run it one or three. Yeah, it's it's a hero that scales incredibly well. As mm -hmm. you get to uh, like 
level 25 obviously like that's when your this hero becomes absolutely insane just like runs around with plus 600 damage just clicking people sorry sorry ricky speaking of running around uh, it seems like that might be a bit of a struggle here with the pickup from rutgers uh yeah it looks like sbu grabbed them themselves a ferrari and rutgers raised them a bugatti Mm -hmm, mm hmm You know it's a good game when Rutgers is playing SBU, and you know it's a great game when my man Bloodseeker's in there. Oh, now, man, what position do you think Bloodseeker's going to be playing, Ricky? This is a, probably one position, Bloodseeker. It must be a one position, right? Yeah, I would say it's almost almost always I've seen it as a one position, or you run it as like a an aggro, like offlaner, against like a hero that he just excels against in lane. Mm -hmm. And he can lane against a Bristleback with a Quelling Blade. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think it's... It's fine. Uh, Bloodseeker's damage primarily is just pure damage in the early phase. So yeah. you should be able to zone out Bristleback pretty easily in the lane. Because Bristleback is really weak levels 1, 2, and 3. Whereas Bloodseeker's pure damage creates like a no-fight zone. So they should be able to zone out Bristleback pretty easily. Speaking of uh, Bristleback, he, he's a hero that tends to struggle if he falls behind early. He can't catch up as well as other cores can. Do you agree with that? Uh, you said... His, his, if if he falls behind early, he struggles catching up. He's not a flash farmer. Uh, you're talking about Bristleback or Bloodseeker? Bristleback. Yeah, Bristleback. I agree. Yeah, yeah, he he does kind of fall off, but he's one of those heroes who doesn't need a ton of items to become super effective. I'd say he's more level dependent than anything, um, because if you pick up like a, a Hood of Defiance, you know, in this game, I think Hood of Defiance is like absolutely necessary into a pipe. Ten seconds uh, he's pretty tanky, right? Like, he becomes pretty sure. tanky. That's his role. Oh, do you think so? He's probably position three now, would you say? Bristleback? Yeah. With the Juggernaut yeah. So, pickup? Absolutely. So, we're going to see here is position three Bristle, um, one position Juggernaut. I actually don't mind the Juggernaut here. It's one of the better picks into Sand King. However, it's not that good against a Bloodseeker. Right. It is good against Zeus, though, and uh, yeah, I'd even say Coddle. Like yeah. I want it. I want to. You need a Will O Wisp killer for sure so you can just spin oh, all yeah. to kill oh, it so sure. that was that was the idea behind the life stealer ban now i i really want to get your opinion on caudal and disruptor two of my favorite supports but first i want to know oh, is there any cheese with zeus and bloodseeker we might be seeing with some uh uh some amp damage lightning bolts oh yeah absolutely um mm -hmm. it's it's also mm -hmm. just a great thing for him to get those thirst stacks right at the start of a fight so yeah. if they're not piped up when Thunder God's Wrath comes out, Bloodseeker gains movement speed Ten, and damage. I, according to my math, about 10 trillion movement speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's accurate. Yeah. So uh, it's a big deal, right? Like that combo has yeah. been in the game for a while. One thing that's really interesting about uh, this Keeper of the Light, which I'm assuming is going to be the five position, is it allows your Blood Right to be so spammable in the lane and it makes Bristleback but he he suffers a lot, mm -hmm. so I think this Bloodseeker's lane is going to be real secure, unless Speaking they misplay of, it, right? Unless they misplay, there's always opportunity. That's the one. Some of the the most beautiful aspects of Dota is you know you can have it all nice and lined out, but you still got to execute. Speaking of executing, hear me out. Amp damage to Caudal Illuminate with Bloodseeker. What do you think? Did I just revolutionize the game or what? Radiant team pick. Uh, or my yeah. Herald. No, I th I think that's. Two like 200 IQ, 10k MMR right there is Thank what that you. is. Thank you. See you guys at TI. I'll be playing <laughs> on the main stage. <laughs> All right, Ricky. Ember Spirit. This is a flashy hero. This is Dark Raiders hero. Am I right or am I right? That's, uh, it could honestly... They could flex it. I would say yeah. it's most likely Dark Raiders. Um, I wish they had their names correct because one of these is like Nozom. Yeah. Which, well, Remelia's got to be. Remelia is going to be on yeah, Juggernaut. The bottom. Or am I making that up? Remelia's Juggernaut that, for sure. That's his hero. He Remelia's played a Juggernaut ton last is year. insane. Yeah, he, he played a like, ton. No one was allowed to play Juggernaut, not because it was banned, but because they didn't want to be put next to Remelia's Juggernaut last season because they knew they could not compare to him. He he, Remelia's Juggernaut, and we're gonna I'm gonna build it up, and then someone else is gonna play it. Remelia's Juggernaut just found farm every game. Like it, fe it felt like he was free farming in games where he was losing lanes. He is a master on that hero, and I'm ecstatic to see it. But honestly, my boy Coddles in the game too, so I'm happy with uh, both the drafts so far. Is there any last pick jumping out at you for Wreckers? I like the Lena ban. Um, last pick for the mid lane. You really just want to pick something here that can counter out the Ember Spirit or counter out the Ember Spirit. Normally, I'd say in this game, Storm wouldn't be terrible, but yep. you do have Disruptor, and Disruptor is like one of the better picks against a, a hero like Storm Spirit, so it makes it kind of difficult. 
Um, Ooh, Death maybe. Prophet. And she builds Yules. Yules is a great counter to Disruptor. It's a great uh, not... counter to Ember, too. You just remove his Flame Guard immediately. Yeah. Ooh, we got some real good cosmetics. Uh, one I want to point out here, that's the scam mount for Keeper of the Light. That's when um, they removed a bunch of cosmetics for Keeper of the Light and they turned it into mounts. And that was one of, that's one, that's one, I'm still salty. I just want to be clear. I'm still very upset with, uh, I was about to say Blizzard, <laughs> with, uh, with Valve for doing that. <laughs> I'm really upset with Riot for, for doing that one. Uh, but that's one of the scam Keeper of the Light mounts that was added later on. It used to be a different cosmetic. I think it was actually the hat, which is that's, on the horse. That's so funny, actually. I don't think it's funny. I'm actually still mad. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, got me where it hurts. Yeah. This oh, is... and that's the Crimson Witness on Bristleback. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is I it, speak... or is that just the special effect? Uh, that is... I think that's actually just the, the alternate style. Yeah, actually, I don't know if that is a... Crim... I think that was just the alternate style, because that's not the Immortal. Yeah, it's the it's the snot blasters that gets the the crimson witness. Well, he has the metal back piece, which was the other immortal, right? The one that shoots like metal quills. Right, 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 right. That's the immortal one. This one came out with the uh, battle pass, ah. and that's the alternate style for it. Yeah, looking good. And Earthshaker, uh, you're gonna first pick Earthshaker in the first match of the CSL season on one of the best teams to ever play in the CSL, and you're not gonna have the Arcana. Good one, SPU. <laughs> good joke, guys. Uh, thanks. thanks. Making thanks. us look like fools in here. <sighs> <sighs> calm down calm down we got this we can do it Jeez, i just can't believe that the the gall of kg just the nerve of some people you know honestly honestly ricky well on sand king we haven't talked about by the way check out sand king's name well i will in a moment I'll tell, i want to introduce him okay okay i'll let you introduce rutgers then let me introduce the the, the school bus you want to hear the horn one more time <laughs> <laughs> here comes the school bus baby Rutgers versus SVU, Ricky. First match of the season. First game of the first match of the season. First place team. Tied for first. Rutgers versus SVU. Let's get right into the introductions because I think this one's going to be action packed. I'm going to start. Do you want you? I'm going to start off with Rutgers here. Let oh, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Here. All right. Are you starting off with my boy Bloodseeker? We have yeah, Game Runer 69. Keeping it lit up on Coddle, we have Jahan, also known as Jahan. Sand King <laughs> is being played by Bus.Ofstrozki.Trashcan. Death's oh, Prophet is being played by Sneaky and Zeus, my man, being played by Snuffles less than Stony Brook. Less than. Hold on. Less than Stony Brook. Do we have a double agent? I don't know what's going on here. This guy, his name is confusing me. I don't really know math very well. All right, Snuffles, we'll see. We'll see. I got my eye on you. Ricky, tell me about SBU. SBU, we have Shu playing the Bristle back. Whoa, We've got, Shu Bristle. Yeah, I was just going to talk on that in a moment. We got Dark Raider yeah. in the mid lane. to be playing the Ember Spirit top lane. No Cam, which I think is Nozom playing the Disruptor. Um, I'm assuming that the Earthshaker <laughs> is being played by Frankie then? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for using your official name, SBU. Right? I'm assuming that's got to be Frankie. <laughs> and then top lane, we got Romelia, also known as Yush or Ush or Uh, playing the Juggernaut. Uh, uh. <laughs> that's the Romelia Juggy. How we doing on runes? How we doing on runes? We're picking it up. Is that a two for two? Two for two for. Very even. In fact, pretty much a perfectly even game so far. A little bit more action coming up top lane, though. I think a lot of Disruptor's coming out. gotta Definitely be careful. Trouble. He's not a very strong laning hero, uh, Disruptor in general. But the side of the Rutgers, their lineup isn't super uh, like aggro. They're not gonna run at you as much as they're actually just gonna har out harass you. So in mm -hmm. this lane, it's not necessarily the worst situation for Disruptor. It could be way worse. Like if they were a run at you lineup, this this would be a, a much more difficult lane. What's going on with the mid lane blocks, Ricky? We just had uh, Dark Raider fight under tower, and now we have Sneaky fighting under tower. Does this benefit benefit one of the heroes more than the other? Uh, I don't think so, really. It will push to Dark Raider's side, and I think that's okay, honestly, for Death Prophet. I think what they want to do is try and get it pushed out so that Earthshaker can gank. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so he's, he's in looking now. Yeah, he's looking for the chicken or, or for a gank. That's one. That's pretty much what so he's doing chicken. there. He has boots first, which makes a lot of sense. But lightning grass coming out, disruptor versus top. 
Where do you think first blood's gonna end up in this lane? Probably Bristleback, unless he until he gets level three, is not too dangerous. I think we'll probably see, probably see the first blood in the top lane just because I think so too. Yeah, that would would make the most sense. If one of them gets super low though, I could see the Bloodseeker snagging a first blood here in the bottom lane. Sure. And Bloodseeker is uh, really going to be happy with the Rask coming out from the Zeus Sand King lane. Uh, banking on his passive helping him uh, play against Bristleback. Uh, I like the side pull here, um, actually in the top lane to try and counteract this this uh, kind of uneven lane equilibrium. Ooh, Zeus Ooh. actually snipes the big Sander. That was beautiful. That's, big, that's really important. You can't let him get that. There's but no way to deal with it. But way that he has sight. Yeah. Now, well, he had creeps on the high ground. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was his creeps. Doesn't it give away the, anything. Yeah, it was just the radiant creeps there. Okay. Well, Earthshaker's making a move back top. We might have a beautiful Fisher. In fact, we do have a beautiful Fisher. He's just gonna body block. in trouble. Body blocks coming out from Earthshaker. Standing on a spin. That's our first blood, Ricky. Beautiful. First game, first blood. Beautiful. And that's just Earthshaker being super patient, right? Like, he, he's not really worried about Shu dying bottom because he is just 1v1ing against a Bloodseeker in the lane, which Bloodseeker is getting a lot out of this. He's 16 and 3. Made that 16 and 4. But, uh,. You know, the time spent sniping for the Curry, he like makes it worth it, rotates top. They're actually block off the Zeus again here. Stun's oh, actually off no. the mark, but no Zeus blade Zeus does not do too hot in the laning phase. Get on top of him, he's got nowhere to go. Puts out some damage on Remelia, but with his friends there, Remelia slices into Sand King before retreating. Speaking of retreating, poor Dark Raider is getting harassed hard by Death's Prophet mid. He did get his bottle though. Yeah, that's a it's, a, it's not an easy lane for him, right? Like. It, he always has to deal with the uh, the spirit siphon. Top lane, are they looking for another Dude, kill? Dude, they're aggressive. There we go. Three for three with the Fishers. A nice little burrow strike across the line. Earthshaker gets left alone, but this is space for Amelia to cut up some creeps. Yeah, and they brought Johan all the way up here too. So now Shu can like basically do... I'm glad that he's already doing it. I was like, he can basically just pull bot lane into the jungle and farm. Um... And that's going to accelerate his farm a lot. He doesn't really want to be in the lane against the Bloodseeker, but he couldn't ever pull because that's where the uh, Keeper of the Light was. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Ricky, I want to talk about last hits right now. Is anyone standing out to you in last hits? Hold on, we might have some action. Stop, question mark. Sand King? It's a rank one Burrow Strike, but that's a Mana Leak. Disruptor's going to lose everything here. Not quite, actually. Wow, Mana Leak got hit hard by the nerf. Well, it's free now. You, the thing was, they just gave it back to the yeah. hero. Chakra Magic uh they're like it's not quite strong enough can we just give a mana leak back and have it also yeah. not cost anything they're like yeah that seems good yeah. fair enough <laughs> why not they've changed my boy quite a few times yeah i miss him but i still love him it's like it's a nice spammable spell if everyone in your lane has full mana you just you know zone him out earthshaker has been spotted mid so i don't think he's gonna get anything with this gank here however bottom lane there's a little bit of action Bristleback under pressure from Bloodseeker, but doing a Bristleback in the position he wants to be, getting getting his bristly back hit. However, I think we're going to see Bloodseeker get a solo kill. Dodge from Shu, trying to get under tower. One more hit, though. No. He, he might God, he's tanky. Are you for real? This guy is unstoppable. That what a play from Shu, actually, shield. to buy that bottle. That's huge. Top lane, though. Oh. They find Sand King with that another. Three man gangs. There's gonna be return kill on Remelia. Gets blinded back. The healing ward is safe, but Juggernaut is not. He falls. And it's nighttime. How the bounty runes looking? Well, Earthshaker's securing this bottom one again yeah. for Shu, so he's gonna get nice. six bottle instances and refill back to full. Uh, Top lane, Dark Raider got both too. They actually picked up all four runes on the side of Stony Brook. Beautiful play from SBU, putting them at 6-2 to two on Bounty Runes, leading the game 3-1 to one on kills. And in nighttime, this is when it starts getting dangerous. Earthshaker made a lot of uh, a lot of moves around the map during the daytime, and he's become even more sneaky as the sun goes down. One of the, I was going to say, one of the things that's interesting about this top lane is they have so much spammable, like, damage. And so Keeper of the Light makes it so much easier for them to just force regen out of um, Stony Brook. But they have a, they had a really good start in this lane, so luckily they're just far enough ahead to kind of deal with it. Where Where's the... When, rather, when do you think Ember Spirit wants to start fighting and stop uh, farming lane? 
Bot lane? Are we setting up a gank here? What are they doing here? I think we might be setting up a gank here. There's the Fisher, Bloodseeker in a bit of trouble. Can he get around? The hatchet's not gonna be enough. The Tango too. Does he want to commit for three trees? He's going to drop blood right, run away, silence hits on both, but he's still the one being he's pursued. Fast. Keeper's porting in, but Keeper's not known as a hero that does a lot with port ins. In fact, he's just gonna... He I wants mean, to help, I'm Ooh, here. Look who's coming over, looking Dark Raider. All right, Ember's here, Ember's here. He gets silence, he gives him the chop. Nice blind, Johan. Once again, a Fisher, but it's not gonna block off the Bloodseeker. He gets the Rupture off, but he's gonna drop. Dark Raider goes right back to lane after that, picks up some creeps under tower. Yeah, that was a great rotation. Topside, we're having a bit of action here. Under the spin, Remelia's pursuing Sand King. Sand King also under the effects of Thunderstrike. They're gonna chase him down. Nice glimpse. Zeus gets pulled back. Juggernaut's gonna make it away. Yeah, that's a really nice play. SBU are playing really well. They're aggressive and it's working for them. Great fishers by Sand King. He's the MVP so far in my books. You what mean is, the what is Earth Shaker, right? Or not Sand uh, Shaker, rather. Yeah. yeah, Shaker. He's been there for three of five kills. Yeah, he has. And, and like, he like we talked He's about, like, boots. he just chilled in the beginning of the game. He was just trying to snipe a courier, but played patiently. A little bit action mid. Dark Raider, forgot where he wanted to go for a second. Goes back for the <laughs> He's like, I don't want to fight this hero. I want your opinion. Soul Ring versus Mana Boots on Shaker as a support. What are you thinking? Shaker as a support for Shaker as a core. Mana Boots for Soul Ring. Go. I think you go Mana Boots um, on support Shaker, like 100%. And on core Shaker, you think it's a Soul Ring sort of thing? I think it can depend. Um, like... Yeah, I, it's I, tough, right? They're both yeah, good. I don't know. I think they're both fine, <laughs> but I would say, yeah, probably going just the soul ring might be fine because you're going to put less Ooh, points in the fissure. Hold on, top usually. side. Disruptor. Is he walking into a trap? No, the centaur sets up on Zeus, stunning him. Now we have Remelia pursuing the Zeus, staying on top. There's nothing he can do. Zeus putting out as much damage as he can before he drops. They get Disruptor low. Sand King's going to jump in with Omni. the Furrow Strike. Omni Slash wow, takes out the support. The, the crit right at the end. Amelia, and now he's gonna chase Sand King out of my lane. Get away from my creeps, sir. Only one of us is farming here. Did you just see network, uh, the last hit chart really quick? Four heroes had 49 CS. I saw that. We got some farmers in this game, but SBU's the one farming heroes too. Although Bloodseeker is is very much enjoying four stacks and or four points in thirst. He's running around like a rocket ship. I would l have liked him to go uh more in the blood right. I think one level yeah. in blood rights a Work little with too the low. Do you think? Yeah. Well, I mean, he could have just like bullied out the the bristleback earlier. I think with it. Mm -hmm. But now bristle. We might have some seven. action mid, Ricky. Man, yeah, Coddle's top. here. No, they didn't go for it. Did you get the glimpse? That... There's a glimpse top. Oh, here we go. Sand King's in trouble once again. We've seen it once. We're gonna see it twice, Ricky. Remelia just moves on him. Are you a creep or a hero? I can't tell. Remelia just kills everything in that lane. I mean, I like the, the phase drums. It's a really good way for him to stay on top of the Sand King, even if he burrow strikes. He has level three burrow oh, strike. rupture bottom. Is Shu in trouble? Shu has an Earth Shaker He's here. Super tanky. The Fisher blocking him. Actually, we have an exorcism committed. Shu's TP is interrupted by Zeus. Still ruptured. He's running. He's silenced. We have a Dark Raider making a move bottom, showing up. They want to get the Bloodseeker, but he makes it away. Now, Zeus is traded for. I don't know if you respect. fight under the DP. See, he's going deep, Ricky. I mean, he's got the exorcism. Why not? They're going to take the Earth Shaker. Is Dark Raider in trouble? No, he's not. He's here for kills. That's a yeah. double. Double remnant on top of that hero, plus the flame guard burn. Plenty of magic damage. Ba -ba -ba Bounties. Johan gonna grab one. Rutgers no top side, oh, top side. Line. Snakes it. Is oh, he gonna burrow so down? That's four for. Uh... Well, we missed the kill there in the bottom lane against Johan, but Support four damage. runes for Rutgers there. Hey, Rutgers making it back. I like it. Mm -hmm. So Net we're equal at bounty runes then. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, net worth, though, a little bit of a lead here for Stony Brook. They're 2,000 gold ahead. Most of that's actually on the cores themselves, so. Okay, now, do we want to go... Actually, it's going to be Aghanims is queued up on Earthshaker. I was going to ask, Ags or Blink, but that question's been answered. I think against the Zeus, it's more warranted to just go the yeah, Aghanim Scepter. Yeah. The problem is, is it's so much more expensive, so instead of getting it at, like, 17, 18 minutes, maybe... Like it, on a good Earthshaker game, you're gonna get it at like 25 to almost 28 minutes. So it's a little bit more difficult. Well, this is a good Earthshaker, but the question still isn't answered if this is gonna be a good Earthshaker game. 
Mm -hmm. Actually, Earthshaker and Disruptor making some moves. How do you feel about Disruptor uh, as a roamer? Yes, out of Storm. Ooh, TP's riding his coming in mid. Dark Raider ruptured up, so they're just going to back out. Man, you might as well save that energy. Yeah, Ember Spirit's now, pretty good against Bloodseeker. Yahan walking Bring right into the high ground here. Whoa. So it seems that... Oh, Is he going to be safe? I think he's blocked safe. him off. He's fine. Bot it tower, by the way. Uh, Shu gets it. Both teams want to leave their cores top and play with the other four on uh, the middle and bottom side of the map. Do you, do you think SBU or Rutgers is playing better for the rest of the map, excluding top lane? I think Stony Brook I feel is like playing SBU's the map really well. Yeah, I mean, they're going to find Zeus here. Here we go, Zeus. Putting some damage out on Disruptor, but Zeus has been captured in the Lightning Prison. He'll be taken out. Yeah, and so he's, they're, they're playing really well on the side of Stony Brook. The main, I think a lot of that is being is coming out from just how much this uh, Bristleback and the Ember Spirit offer as far as lane pressure and ganking. And if you look at Rutgers lineup, the the Bloodseeker can't really do a whole oh, lot against bot. either of those heroes. Teleports in. We got Death's Prophet. We got Coddle. We got Bloodseeker. We got Zeus. They all want Shu, the team captain. Shu playing it slow, keeping his back to them. He has a Vanguard, but I think he's in trouble, Ricky. Yeah, Lined it back him. in and taken out. That, is that a five man rotate? Not quite. Not quite five. Tower is under That's a four man rotation, but that leaves the middle tower open, and SBU is going to use this opportunity to put some pressure on it. And that's a haste of Death Prophet. She's on her way over. Yeah, she's got Exorcism. But no, yeah, I, I agree. SBU, I think they're playing the map better right now. They got Rutgers running all over the place. Not to say the Rutgers is out. Rutgers just got a nice kill on uh, Bristleback Bottom. Yeah, that Bristleback feels like is really good. Game. The thing is, is once he has a pipe, though. Glimpse, mid. Here we go. This is a big kill. The Blood Rite is down. Though. The Wisp is down, too, though. That's going to be the save. Dark Raider is not having any of this, but he doesn't have a team, either. He's going deep. He got the Bloodseeker under tower. Gives him the double bomb. He has no remnants left, and he's ruptured behind enemy lines. However, his boys are pushing up. Stay away from my mid player. We're taking your tier one. Don't even go near us. Ursula's really good play from Dark Raider. He knows, man. He believes in his team. That is a that is a play you make when you've been playing with these guys for three years. You know just, that they have your back. He's, you know, easily one of the strongest heroes on the map right now. He he does so much damage. He built these like early game items. Uh, Earthshaker just took out what? He actually picked up a kill. He on just Zeus. echo. Oh, he... Yeah, he just echoed Zeus bottom and Stuck killed on him. him. He ported bottom immediately. He actually did it in the trees too, so Rutgers didn't notice. Picked up the XP and picked up a kill. Great play. And this is what we were saying. SBU. They're in control of the game. They're making uh, Rutgers respond to them. Yeah, they're looking real good. 5,000 gold lead now. Oh and Remelia has his um, Maelstrom completed. Ember also going for a Maelstrom. Not quite there yet, but... Oh, top side. Uh-oh, Sand King is stuck. Blocked by Disruptor in the trees. A Bloodrite comes out, though. Disruptor's the one in trouble here. That was hilarious. hilarious. Sand King, like, thought about revealing himself, and he's like, wait a minute, this guy can't move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, whoops. He's like, Alright, good luck, dude. You're dead. Uh, I like the Veil build on that hero. I was he just goes just Bracer ask. Veil. It's Tell fantastic. It. It's definitely the best build for Sand King. They don't have... They don't like have to build it on Death Prophet, and having that damage amp is really solid. And then Sand King is going to go for the Blink Dagger next, but the Veil is going to let him play in lane more, which is what he's been doing. He's been sitting top all game, and now he's ready to start making some moves. Bottom lane, Zeus. Might get found here by the Earthshaker. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. No, Fisher does Fisher. not block off. However, this is going to buy Shu more time to pressure topside. We have TPs on Shrine. Remelia goes with the Omni. They're going to start the fight by taking off a Coddle. Turn it into a spin on a beautiful Static Storm on two cores, Ricky. On the spin Ember. with the Triple Bomb, baby. That's Dark Raider. Sand King really wants to be a part of this. A great Epi. Uh, no double Burrow mana. Strike, but too late. The Glimpse back. You are too far behind enemy lines, my friend. Do they, Do they have not sentry, have sight? Though. They have Dust on Earthshaker. They, they got him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, another spin. SVU are looking dangerous. That was quite the Disruptor ult followed up by uh, Dark Raider. Just immediately realizes like, hey, I can just triple remnant and kill these guys, right? Like, super solid play. For sure, there was, that was almost a timing there from Rutgers, right? Where if Sand King could have gotten in slightly earlier, yep. they may have been able to turn that fight, but it just did not work out for them. It was like, it was like Sand King did what he wanted to do, but it was just like you said, it was just too late. And SBU is, they're quick, man. They're so fast. You can tell these guys are comfortable playing with each other. They're all on the same page. No hesitation. Just annihilation.
Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's... Well now Rutgers seems a little shook. They're they're you know, S SVU is SVU is happy with that. They're starting to play up, pushing up to the river, trying to start taking the farm away from Rutgers. Yeah, I mean you talked about earlier that uh some of these heroes don't like scale incredibly well just because they don't farm super fast. Bristleback, mm -hmm. however, has a great start now. <laughs> he, Vanguard and he the is hood. not facing the problem of a rough early game at all. Yeah. This is this is like best case scenario, right? He's gonna pick up Crimson Guard, he'll pick up a pipe for his team, and then you just essentially five man behind this bristleback. And there's yeah. not a lot that Rutgers can really do about it. They can disengage, uh, right, with Will O Wisp, but I don't even know if they have like the team fight to deal with with the Stony Brook lineup. And even committing Will O Wisp to a disengage, it's like that's not what you want to do with it at all. You wanna be getting kills, not saving lives, even though saving lives is better than losing them. And even, uh, I wanted to add, playing behind the Bristle, they've just been leaving Shu alone for the most part, too, and just he's causing pressure because you, there's no single hero on Rutgers that's going to deal with Bristleback unless, for whatever reason, Shu wants to run out of full duration rupture. So Shu's, Shu's making a lot of space for SVU. Yeah. They can play with, the SVU can play with Bristle or they can play without him. They're happy either way. I think they're in a good spot. Yeah, it'll, Sand King definitely needs this Blink Dagger here fairly soon. I would like... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what death. Yeah, she has the Yules going for the Axe as her yeah. next item. I think that's entirely fine. Mm -hmm. It's just there doesn't seem like there's. To me, it, it's hard to say that there's like there. There's not like one particular item that comes to mind. I'm like this is what Rutgers need. Yeah. To bounce back I think in this Blink game. Blink will be the biggest for them. Yeah, Blink and then Bloodseeker's BKB. I think are both really big. Because yes. Bloodseeker needs BKB and he needs to be able to just run at this run at this support duo of uh, yeah. SBU. And just kind of try and stay away from this bristleback in these fights. I agree. Uh, but Bloodseeker still has to be scared of the Omni Slash. However, with BKB, it's, it's he's going to be in a much better shape to put some damage out. Combo with the uh, Zeus Ulti to give him uh, <clears throat> stacks of his passive. Go uh, he's going to be here. dangerous. Okay, we might have some action here. On the high ground, we have Rutgers slowing down, dropping Urshaker to half to start it off. But oh. a double Fisher. Oh my god, I blinked. Ricky, sorry, I, am I lagging? I, what happened? I, 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 all of a sudden, everyone was dead. That was uh, like three Maelstrom procs is what that was. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's go to the damage uh, recap. Yeah, he just like that Omnid and proc well like crits and, crits and Maelstrom like immediately and they just both die. Well, yeah, that's one way to do okay, it. Yeah. I think I mean, that's a good way to set up Roche. What do you think? Yeah, pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> one of the things people may not remember, when Coddle's Blinding Light came out and they reworked uh, Omni Slash, he used to be able to Blinding Light and Omni Slash was dodgeable. Like, you would actually just dodge the auto attacks. But uh, they applied a soft dispel, or I think it might be a hard dispel, to Omni Slash when it's cast, so you can't, like, go in disarmed and stuff. Oh, very, thank you, Ricky, for the tippies. I love it. That's like, that's like patch note lore. Yeah, that was a big deal. Um, it is a big deal. Coddle was like one of the best counters in the game to to Juggernaut when uh, that change came out because you just like you just keep spamming blinding light on him and he can't omni slash <laughs> while he's blinded. <laughs> I mean, you can't hit anyone if you can't see. Yeah, true, true. So how are we looking on? So what's the BKB is the big one. Ooh. Well, hold on, Ricky. Now, I am a little rusty with Dota, but this does not look like a BKB being built on Bloodseeker. No, he's going Maelstrom. Yeah. I mean, How do you... It, Maelstrom versus BKB, what are you thinking? I think Maelstrom is fine. Like, he needs to be able to fight and do damage. Okay. But uh, I worry that they just don't have the ability to team fight. Like, he's just... He needs to, like, farm several more items. Mm -hmm. And where's he going to get the... Like, where's he going to farm? They only have uh, two Outer Towers left. Yeah. Zen King has Blink, though. Uh, like, if you look at Rutgers' high ground, it is incredible. Like, fighting into the Rutgers' high ground is so difficult. You have Blink Sandstorm, you have Will-O-Wisp, or Blink Sand... You have Blink Sand King, Will-O-Wisp, you have the Zeus ult. Like, like, there's so many ways that you can keep your high ground alive. So, it's going to be very difficult for SBU to do that anytime soon, but... Um, but maybe they're, they're, the plan behind they're the working towards it. Just try and farm up. He's going BKB next. That would make sense to me. There it is. I like it. And and we were mentioning the the BKB will help Rutgers team fight. BKB on Bloodseeker will help Rutgers team fight. We haven't necessarily seen a real Rutgers team fight. And that's where that's where a lot of their power lies. Zeus all Death Prophet all Sand King all Willow Wisp combo that with the Blood Right from Bloodseeker. 
as you mentioned, their high ground defense is great, and I think if Rutgers can group up his five and get in a fight with SVU, especially if they outnumber them, they're extremely dangerous, even though they're 11k behind on net worth. So something interesting here on Ember Spirit, he, he picked up the Radiance, which I like. Very good in this Love game. Love it. The magic damage is incredible, because the, the side of Rutgers is fairly... Uh, like fairly like yeah. weak as far as like they're ta they're not tanky right they're all like very squishy <laughs> yep. heroes so yep. the radiance oh, can just help burn down these people really quick but he goes for the one second searing chains uh at level oh 15 my god as that talent to drives me mad yeah that I think that is level 25 talent if you ask me <laughs> it's <laughs> dude i hate that the talent like okay i guess i'm just here for the rest of the game yeah it's it's a frustrating talent to play with for sure it's the longest second in the game. Yeah. Time is relative, right? It is. It is. Well, SBU has the Aegis. I, I'm going to go out on a whim here. I'm assuming SBU is just going to farm until there's maybe two, two, two minutes, one minute left on the Aegis. And then you think we might see a high ground? Or you think they're just going to farm it out all the way? I think we'll probably wait for Aegis. Uh, SBU really want to get a pick off. Um, before going high ground, but it can't just be like... I think if you pick off Sand King, that's your best bet. If you can pick uh -huh. off Sand King and force his buyback, then you could probably go high ground, but even then, yeah. it's still not easy. They might just wait out for the BKBs and like, next Aegis. There's also but... uh, Death Prophets uh, getting close to 15. Cast range or max health spirit siphon? What do you think, talent-wise? I actually don't know. I don't play this hero enough. Maybe the Spirit Siphon, because you're going against like Juggernaut, Earthshaker, or I'm sorry, um, Bristleback, Earthshaker, Ember, right? All these Jug, like all these melee heroes that the Spirit Siphon might just be better. Yeah, but, it seems uh, like it would be definitely good against Bristleback. I what love about, I love um, Bristleback's build, though. He he picked up a casual plate mail, has the pipe finished, and he's actually itemizing to go for the Lotus Orb after that plate mail, which Really good this game. I would still like to see him finish a Crimson Guard just for high ground pushes, but yes. uh, look how much health he has. Yeah, overall it's a big, it's it's really solid. That is a twenty two hundred forty HP Bristleback, eighteen armor. He gets ruptured topside. We have Rutgers moving in. This could be the kill they need to get into the game, but that's oh, the taking zero on the map. He's gonna take a one of everything, and Rutgers is gonna drop him. Meanwhile, mid side, we have a, we have a, we have the ult from DP. We have the ult from Coddle spinning in the middle of it. Romelia will eliminate the Will-O-Wisp and chase Death Prophet back up to the high ground. The spin ends, and with that, so does SBU's assault. However, Rutgers committing exorcism. They want something else. Yule Scepter's on cooldown, and Dark Raiders just having fun. Nah, 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 nah. There's nothing. Do you happen you can to do. see Earthshaker real quick? What's well, Earthshaker up? Hey. He's ready. He's waiting. He's got an Aghanims. Oh yeah, baby. Mm. It's time to slam. It's time to slam. All right. Now, no one knows. No one on Rutgers knows, do they? You know how, like, when you play a fighting game and it's like a new opponent, like a new, you have a new challenger? Yeah, yeah. Just, it's I like Kevin Durant challenger. has joined your game now, basically. <laughs> was Kevin Durant, was he in Smash Bros or Street Fighter? I think he was uh, Tekken, actually. Oh, hold on. Earthshaker found his best friend, Zeus. Earl, remember me? <laughs> he, oh, he does get the Fisher. One more, one more. Is he going to echo solo? Goes for it? No. Nah, I mean, you can't run away for Zeus. Bonk. One <laughs> more, baby. One more, baby. Let's go. One more. Oh, my oh, God. Sandy, but Tank is here. He's getting greedy. Zeus falls, but Earthshaker's going to fall. Two, the dust comes out. Disruptor's here. What a glimpse from Disruptor, hey. though. Did you see that? Beautiful, beautiful play. Pushing it back, keeping him safe. Disruptor's doing what he can, and in the meantime, once again, as soon as Rutgers takes their eyes off the tower, SBU pushes down down a lane. Three cores, putting pressure on the mid lane. They've oh, already dropped the tower below in. half. There's the mid player getting gl uh, glimpsed back, but she yields herself under the static score. We're going to have the Fisher coming out, holding her down, and SBU, they may be on the high ground of Rutgers, oh, but they don't the stop echo. because they got the Echo Slam. Bounce it in. That's Kevin Dr I mean, that's Earthshaker. Come to the Echo. <laughs> now, SBU, regroup. They don't even look like they're getting in a fight. Worst Giving word it has already been used though, feet. so they gotta be careful. There's and a rupture. You have to be a little bit careful, but a lot of spells have been used. Glimpse back, he runs fast, but he's not there anymore. One second duration, Caudal in danger. Do SBU want to keep going? I think they might want to keep going. Are they still holding oh, on to an Aegis? No They took way. him out. They took him out, Ricky. That slight barely killed Keeper of the Light. And the tower is down. Look at the amount see. of damage that this uh, Ember has been doing in these fights. He is all well, of the, the damage. it's the only damage I can see because it dwarfs every other player in the game. 
3,900. This is arcane rune ember. This makes a lot of sense. Okay. Board is used. SBU wants the melee. They're hitting. They're smacking. Chop, chop, chop. There's the blood right. Remelia's not scared. He's silenced. He's double silenced. He's up there with his voice zone. They're not going to stop. I hear the epicenter. I hear the burrow strike. This might be what Rutgers needs. This is the defense. They're pushing out SVU. We got a will o wisp right in the middle of it. The defense of will o wisps get away, away from my racks, SVU. Rutgers, they lost the tower, but they held the high ground. They just don't have enough damage to take down these heroes on the side of SVU. And they have so many saves, right? Ember Spirit, super mobile, and you have to lock him down. Through Flame Guard, you probably don't have the damage to kill him anyway, but then you're done yeah. with this. Bristleback, who's got, you know, pipe, so much armor, and Juggernaut, who can just pop Manta, Blade Fury, and run away. So yeah. it is it is so hard for Rutgers to find a kill here. And they committed everything for that, that high ground defense. Speaking of hitting kills, no, no. Dark Raider, Frines, Johan, another. Godlike. And that's a, yeah, what, are they going in again? 10 0 5. He has Aghanim Scepter completed. No reason not to. Uh oh. Glimpse out of the sandstorm. He has to blink. Okay, SBU's booting another push. Does Rutgers have what they need to defend? I'm looking and there's not a lot of alts up. There's uh, there's a rupture and there's a Thunder God's Wrath. Range I mean, Rocks is going to fall. Melee up. Rocks is going to fall, Ricky. Yeah. They're going to rotate bottom. Uh, I don't know what you do at this point because your Death Prophet, no ult for 70 seconds. Ooh. No ult on Sand One King. More. Oh, and the healing ward, the salt in the wound. Sand King's thinking about it. There's the rupture, but Remelia just spins and keeps on hitting. There's the blink in, kills the healing ward. Burrow strike out, great job. We're gonna seal off Sand King from the fight. However, SBU regrouped and they're in great shape. Rupture comes out, but it's not doing much. Illuminate, it's gonna hold them back for a second. They're buying time for DP all 45 seconds, but Remelia is back in again. Up There's the Echo Slam. Who did they find? Bloodseeker. That's a great kill, but he has buyback. Sand King's stuck there, but uh, I don't have any vision. Dark Raider's oh, looking for more. This guy's so strong. No. Is Dark Raider going too deep, Ricky? No, you tell me. No. Underneath the cover of the Static Storm, he cannot be stopped. They finish the Zeus and they get the buyback on Bloodseeker. There's a Bugatti Bloodseeker in this game, though. Bloodseeker wants a kill, but he might. He doesn't have buyback. He gets sealed. The Wisp comes out. It hits on three. Pearl Strike comes out. It hits on them. Rutgers is hitting every spell, but they're not getting any kills. On the flip side, the ultra kill godlike. Here we go. SBU cannot be stopped, Ricky. They've been on the grand. They've been in the grand finals twice, and it looks like they're starting the year off very aggressively. They want to go back for a third time. Kevin Durant and Ember Spirit pushing into yeah, the fountain, and a GG is called by Rutgers. Eight to 30, 24 net worth lead. We didn't even make it to 30 minutes, but Jesus, it was just a pleasure to spend that time with you and these great players. I mean, that was, I mean, that's just. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was a super solid game coming out from Stony Brook. I want to say, the first thing I want to say about that game, because if you just look at the numbers here, 8 to 30, favoring SBU, who won in under half an hour. I. Everything points to a stomp, but Rutgers played well. Like, you could tell they're a coordinated team. You could tell they have a strategy. You could tell they know what they want to do. Uh, I just I just think SBU did played it better. Obviously, they won. But I, I, I have, like, if we, going into game two, I'm still, like, like Rutgers could take this. Like, Rutgers, is, like, I, I would not be surprised for Rutgers to take game two. And even, they, I wouldn't be surprised if they took the series 2-1 uh, over SBU. SBU is a great team. Team, we knew that going in, but I think Rutgers still proved that they know how to play Dota. This just wasn't their game. Yeah, I mean, you're, I, I definitely agree with you. I think a lot of this might have just come down to some draft issues. Um, honestly, Greater the shaker play early on to really set SBU up for a fantastic game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like SBU's draft can can easily punish anything on Rutgers uh, without BKBs. Like they, if they don't have like a BKB and a hero gets caught out, you're not going to save them. Um, I just think SBU played it really smart. They got their items. They played their timing super well. So mm -hmm. shout out to SBU. Great game one. We'll be going into game number two, I think, actually here very shortly. Um, I, I, my, my favorite uh, part of watching SBU play, though, is what I, what I honestly wanted to be my favorite part of SBU play. Uh, you and I have been following these guys for at least two years now. Oh, yeah. And it's just Dark Raider leading the charge. And the confidence Dark Raider has when he crosses the river before his team, when he goes to the high ground before he, his team can catch him, when he pushes past the tower, leaving his team behind, but he goes in knowing that everyone has his back and they're all going to flood over following him. He goes for a kill. 
SBU doesn't hesitate. They don't blink. They don't think about it. They see Dark Raider go in and they follow him. And that's just beautiful to watch. And and that confidence and the coordination uh, that SBU demonstrated here is a huge reason why the score is eight uh, kills for Rutgers to 30 kills for SBU. True. Dark, like, it's just, it's, it's, those are, that's, that's not a play. The, why I think that's so beautiful is because that's not a play a team does if they're uncomfortable playing with each other, if they're new, if they don't know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And I've, we, we both said it multiple times. This is, this is a returning squad. They've been, to the grand finals in California two years ago. They were the grand finals in Atlantic City last year. And if they keep playing like this, I imagine they're going to be going to the grand finals this year too. Yeah, I mean, definitely another team to watch this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we'll be back after a very short break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back with game number two between Stony Brook University and Rutgers. See, See you guys soon. Catch you now. Next, we have Intercom, Decoy World VIP. Such an unreal song. Both the original version and the VIP are amazing tracks. Without me rambling on further, though, here it is. I stayed awake last night Cause I couldn't close my eyes And see you another night I drove myself crazy thinking you take my wildest dreams and tear them all to the ground So I tried to create a decoy world for you to destroy in my mind You can stay
Makes you very quite tough Always having bad luck You think you're going crazy Look up, there's a new life waiting Your head's buried in the sand You've been dealt the wrong hand Can't imagine how you feel Only you know that it's real Don't look back, just carry on Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. I'm here. You're here. We're here. What's up, Ricky? That's all we need, right? That is all that we need. I, I'm Me, looking at my, you, my checklist some here. good Dota. You're looking at what? I'm just looking at my checklist, and I'm like, all right, my I have to be here. Yeah. And uh, Carlos has to be here. We're good, right? That's, here that's I am. the only Check things it. I Check have. Check that one off. All right. That's and we got some good Dota coming up. Very easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now. Okay, Ricky, oh, what are you thinking? Ember man. Spirit or Juggernaut? Can you can, is there a decisive MVP? I do think Dark Raider gets it. Yeah, I do. Th I do think Dark Raider did a lot in that game. He he just played to his hero's limits throughout the whole game. He made great rotations in the early game and late game. He applied so much pressure that Rutgers could never catch a break. He he pretty much forced Rutgers to either buy BKB oh, first man. item. Or lose. And I don't think they even win if they buy the BKBs. It's just like, that's the scenario he put them in. And then you have this late game presence of this Juggernaut who has essentially just been free farming around the map while his team makes space. So it's it was just really well played by Rut uh, by Stony Brook. They, they put Rutgers in an, uh, pretty much an unwinnable situation, like I said. I think a lot of that game came down to the draft, to be honest. But um, Stony Brook played super well. Well, I, 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 if you were to ask Rutgers, apparently they're going to go with Shu as the MVP. That's that's two Shu bands, Bristleback, really Undying, the staple Shu hero, and then one Dark Raider band, the Kunkka pickup. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I think that uh, I think Shu played an amazing game. It just wasn't necessarily a flashy game, which is understandable. It's a Bristleback, but he was pretty much unstoppable. The his his only real death was when it was Rutgers versus Shu. <laughs> um, <laughs> like a couple times, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, okay. and the pressure he applied. I think, I think Shu played the game that Sand King wanted to play, where oh, they just, yeah, yeah. where oh, they, they left him alone, and he was just like, "What are you gonna do? Not one. I, I, you can't stop me solo. Bring the whole team if you want to shut me down." And that's the reason he's wearing the shades on the banner. We'll that's talk about the though, Ricky. Yeah, we'll talk about bad in a second. I just want to point out Shu's score last game. I believe was like zero three and and like ten. Like that was his actual <laughs> score. Which says a lot about what to expect out of the offlane position. Your your hero is not like a flashy playmaker nowadays. I think that's what a lot of people are used to seeing. And heroes like Sand King are kind of like that. But a hero uh, like Bristleback, much simpler more gameplay. You just build the items to fight, to push, and uh, it pans out really well. And Abaddon is that hero, again, but it's going to be for the side of Wreckers this time. Now, and, she, and for people who, who haven't been following these uh, amazing Defenders of Ancients like, as, as closely as we have, uh, she, she has a reputation for not only his massive MMR and... Uh, and his massive amazing, brain. As, okay, well, we'll just go straight to the punchline. Oh, uh, no! Is that where you <laughs> Like, you're just going to take, you're just gonna, you're just gonna take it right from me, hey? Like, just... just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I was trying to build it up, and you just took it right away. <laughs> like that, I'm not joking. Like that's literally right where I was going with that one. <laughs> okay, uh, can I get another caster? Uh, 
He's a genius, man. He oh. is a drafting genius, and you can even see it in his play. He's an objective-based gamer. He, he, you know what Shu is? He is the and is it? Oh, never mind. He is the opposite of NA Dota. He is like so objective focused, so game like focused oh, on man, playing the game, really winning the game. He doesn't care that. about kills, or at least his play doesn't make it look like. He's worried about kills. He styles on people by just oh, obliterating them with strategy. Yeah. And, and I don't know. And also, by the way, uh, in Atlantic City last year, Shu was the most well-mannered player I talked to. And well-mannered is not how I describe a lot of players, who people who play Dota. Yeah. He was extremely well-mannered and an absolute pleasure to interact with. Yeah, I think I think he's like a very thoughtful person, right? Like he, he has like everything he does um, in and outside of Dota, like he puts thought into, which is... Uh, you know, kind of, kind of I would nice. hope so. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, really quickly on the side of Stony Brook, uh, they got some lot, some uh, long lost lore? lovers up there, right? That's the that's the lore pick, Skyrath and Vengeful Spirit. Feels bad. Wait, so what? What? What's it's uh it's it's so hold on real quick. Let me tell you. This is the lore, right? Uh, this is a Skyrath, lore stream, by the way. Skyrath works for Vengeful Spirit's ex boss, who fired Vengeful Spirit. Skyrath is in love with Vengeful Spirit, uh, but his job is to kill Vengeful Spirit, moron. and Skyrath's magical yeah, power is directly related to how devoted he is to his job. However, his job is to kill Vengeful Spirit, so Skyrath Giant lives on the fine line of he needs to pursue Vengeful Spirit to kill her, but he doesn't want to kill her. But if he, if he, if he doesn't pursue her, then he loses all his magic power. That's some serious stuff right there. That's literally what Romeo and Juliet is based off of Skyrath and Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, better love story than, uh, what is that really crappy teen movie that I can't remember? Uh, High School Musical. You no, really it's, pick a hero. god dang it. Ten seconds left. Uh, what about vampire. Five seconds more vampire day, story. <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> I just want you to suffer after you took oh, my joke dude. away. I, th I ruined my own joke, man. I ruined your joke. I might as well ruin mine. I can't believe that happened. Um, uh, it's too good. It's I nice wanted to talk about game. Tiny. This is an incredible Tiny game already. By the, like, I, I just look at these two heroes, and Tiny excels at killing both of them from either the four position or a core. So this I mean, is gonna Tiny be really good. killing most heroes. Ooh, maybe not that one. That hero actually really likes to play against Tiny, a strength mm -hmm. hero with a large health pool. Abaddon is pretty good against Life Stealer though, because mm -hmm. you just aphotic shield anyone who gets open wound and you just walk away. Yep. And do you think we might see a? It's a little early to to make this, but Four Staff is fantastic pickup against Life Stealer. Do you think this might be an ABBA Four Staff game? Oh, man, I don't know if you need it. Uh, like, you, I think you just the the, the aphotic shield is good. Yeah, I think you just go like you better pick your hero save your team things. items. Like you just pick up a Vlad's and and like a Solar Crest and keep your team alive. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Um, so I don't know. We're talking about the saves and the, yeah, you you mentioned it last game. Saves are saves are high value, and we see in the first phase, Vengeful and Abba picked up phase one. It's true. It's true. You you gotta like the saves. You gotta you gotta help your boys out. But you know what? As much as I love the saves, there's one thing I love more apart from casting Dota with you, and that's the kills. And that's why I gotta respect the tiny. Although, throw some love to Skyrath. That hero does damage. Yeah. I do like the Bloodseeker ban this time. It, it is a hero that's uh -huh. pretty good against Lifestealer. Uh -huh. So, they remove that. Yeah, Bloodstealer's mobility is chasing people around, so Rupture is kind of, you know, it might be the dream counter. Also, Tiny tossing anyone who's Ruptured is hilarious. So. Yep. You just, oh, you just toss them like a thousand grenade. units and they die. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the opposite grenade. Yep. Uh, and toss is one of my favorite spells in the game. Just how it interacts. It's just, it's just, that's one of the, another thing that makes Dota so beautiful. It's just those little interactions. Hey, and LC, Legion. you were talking about her last yeah. game. What's up with her? I think Legion might be one of the best offlaners in the game. Yeah. She's just really What's good. up with that? She, she's essentially another Abaddon, right? Like, you, yeah. her, her heal scales so well like it is such a good healing uh, ability but it's a hard to spell you can get your allies out of pretty much anything mm -hmm. uh, and you just you don't build her like a carry I, I think this patch I've been, like i said earlier is so much more dependent on like this grouping up fight behind your allies type of thing and if you build legion commander with like a drums vlads and like a crimson guard or solar crest like these items to enable your life stealer in this game yeah you're gonna be way better off and, also, and it's Legion not... Skyrath is like a classic 
duo. But, like, exactly. it just gives your that's Skyrath so much say. more kill potential in these games. Mm -hmm. And it's it, that's like one of the the pre the prereqs to picking Legion Commander. You want you want to be able to use her save, but you want to have a, a a dual winner. And the dual winner is always going to be someone to combo with with LC. And there you go, Skyrath, classic dual winner for LC. Just drop drop the uh, Mystic Flare, and you're not going anywhere during the duel. Although, are we going to have Tiny Tiny toss someone out of the duel to save from the Mystic Flare? You heard it here first, boys. It's happening. I mean, you can toss either of them because the, yep. it'll force them they to chase. run. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they'll chase. So like, you can you can force either of them unless he like duels Lena and Lena can like keep hitting them from that range. <laughs> but uh, yeah. we'll see. Hey, hey that's a beefcake. They, wait, how does what do you how is the interaction between Life Stealer and CK? Because Life Stealer loves to hit strength heroes, but CK just loves to hit anything. Yeah, it's actually. I don't know if I really like this Chaos Knight pick. Legion Commander's overwhelming odds just shreds illusions. Ooh, yeah. So this this is like a weird pick for me. It is really strong in the laning phase, so maybe their idea is to aggro it and throw a bat in the safe lane against the Legion Commander. Mm -hmm. Even in that lane, though, oh, Legion doesn't do too bad because you can get to three three stacks on the auto and then purge it with, uh, you know, press the attack and then just click a Abaddon. So mm -hmm. it's... It's not even that bad of a lane for Legion against the Abaddon. I think Abaddon does eventually win it, but yeah. at that point, Legion just starts lane cutting. She'll just go behind the creep wave and, exactly. and have a moment of courage and uh, press the attack to just out-regen any damage. You, you really gotta I always here, think that's hilarious. Legion Commander and Sven does it as well, where you, you uh, just level you, up your you passive and you just play the lane as if there's no one laning against you and you just kill all the creeps. It's just, I always, it always cracks me up. It's such a funny way to play the game. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I, I I do think I thought I liked Rutgers lineup more before the Chaos Knight pick. Mm -hmm. Come on, Tiger But we'll see what well, they do. It, it's what about it's not there's a, a, there's a Meepo ban, by the way. Meepo last ban. Yeah, what they their dude is Rutgers up to something sneaky that we were not aware of. You know that that I'm going to be watching for the Meepo from Rutgers for the rest of the year, and I hope I didn't just get baited. Who is like who even plays Meepo on their team? I'm gonna assume it must be Sneaky, oh, right? Because he's their mid. Uh, but it could be they could swap roles for uh, Meepo. That's well, something that's a hero you definitely swap roles for. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, wow, there's the DP death again. again. Okay. I'm I'm okay with the DP because she's gonna build a Yules, which is great against their team. She's <laughs> gonna have Exorcism, which is gonna make her not a very good target for Legion Commander to duel her or anyone standing around her. Uh, she also has an Abaddon. You know, that, that's that's the yeah. big thing is you have an Abaddon to just sit yeah. behind you, and that's yeah. a, that's so much better than last game where if Death Prophet got caught or glimpsed or something, she just dies. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah Abbas seems really strong. That's the first pick too. Okay, what's it gonna be? They Zeus, go for the, four the damage Zeus again. Wait, a lot of damage on on SBU. Wait a minute. Tons of damage. Uh, hold on. That's Dark Raider mid. That's Zeus mid. I was like, that's not that four position because we have Sky. That is what range. I came here to see, man. That's dangerous. Yeah, I wasn't. I I saw that, and I, my initial thought was Skyrath was gonna go mid uh, against the DP, but they're gonna put Zeus there instead. Um, cosmetics on Abba, by the way, are beautiful. I really like. Yeah, that that's set. the newest. It's not flashy, set. but it looks great. That's the newest one that came out from the collector's cache. That's hey, what do you one. think of the tiny with the sword? The sword is just like so weird to me because I don't understand why it's a <laughs> sword. Because he loots the tree. He just like <laughs> he just like eats. He just like grabs a tree out of the ground and then it somehow transmutes uh, into a sword a made of hero, like yeah. iron. I, so uh, it's I I love it. I think it's weird as heck, but I love it. Oh, I'm like it I'm looks happy amazing. Game, but it's like it feels like it feels like it's a mod. Like it's like unofficial like skin where it's like oh, yeah. this is really cool but uh, I don't know if it should be in the game. But you know what I'm happy it did is. Did you ever uh did you ever play League of Legends back in the day? Have you ever, have you ever heard of that game? Uh no, usually I just have like so I have this thing like this called a, the shoot and you just throw all your garbage down it so it's really easy for me to get rid of stuff I don't want. So I just never actually interacted with League, but uh go on. Okay, yeah, so back in the day, you could, like, import your own custom skins. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, like, back in Alpha, like, you, like, you, you, were, there was just, like, skin packs that you would just, like, people would make online, and you would just import them into your game files, and then, like, when you would load those characters in games, you'd have a bunch of custom skins. And I was like, oh, that's... Like, imagine how much money they would have lost if they kept that in. Ah, uh, yeah, dude, it was, 
It was fun. <laughs> that, that was, those were the good days. That's hilarious. Because you That's would awesome. just like have the weirdest looking characters running around on your screen. Oh, for sure. Well, do you remember, speaking of uh, fun stuff, in Heroes of New Earth, you would, could have macros to spam the chat and people would make assy art, like school buses and dumpsters and stuff whenever they got kills. Oh, yeah. Have you I played with Rutgers before? This is still, that's, they do this oh, in Dota Oh, yeah, Dota never still. mind. Never mind. They still do that. They still do it. <laughs> that's burr, a Rutgers burr, classic. School bus, baby. <laughs> hey, here we go. That's a good looking tiny. Oh, yeah. Well, quickly before uh, we get into the action here, is there a draft that you're favoring? Uh, they're both good. I like them a lot. I got if I got if I'm gonna jump ahead and say I'm I'm favoring SBU because of the damage. Just this, this, the damage that's coming out from SBU means that regardless of if they win or if they lose, I think it's gonna be a good game. Wait, what, what? is going on here? Why is what is up? This what you looking at? CK's. Going mid, maybe? No, Death Prophet's mid. What is Abaddon and CK doing in the same lane? So is five They both have Abaddon? horses. They're probably just chilling, talking about horse stuff. Yeah, wait a minute. This is a core tiny, I think. Good. Let's do it. Do they just like swap their roles? I'm really confused here. Because this is, yeah, it's support Abaddon. So it's a five position Abaddon. Okay, okay. This I like it, I like it. So he's just going to sit beside, behind CK. CK also has uh, lifesteal from his Chaos Strike, making him difficult to deal with in lane. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. They do see the Skyrath Mage and Legion Commander top. Looks like Chaos Knight trying to roam around. They are going to see him, though, as you have a war, like some high ground vision here thanks to this mid ward. The Legion Commander going to back off, make sure that they secure their rune. Yeah, they know, they know. Now, CK won't level stun for the rune, right? No way. You level stun no in this way. lane, you're going to lose. Here we go. Here we go. Who gets it? LC? LC gets it. LC snakes two it. Two. two and two, just like last game. Okay. Shu took a lot of damage from Yahan here, but... Concussive last regen one. Either. Wow, actually, uh, Yahan has one tango, and he's at uh, about 49% HP, according to my calculations. Miss Coil, though, right? He's just yeah. going to suicide out and come back to lane. Yeah. He has to be careful, though. Uh, actually, it looks like CK might have to be careful. A lot of aggression coming out from SBU in the top lane. Right out the gate. I don't think there's any kill threat just yet, but uh, the pressure's coming out. Any any wild lane matchups you want to point out? Anything that looks one-sided? I mean, top lane, Shu's oh, going to find his kill, actually. Might actually oh. Oh, there's the deny. Barely. That's Yahan. I mean, that's, that's like good heads-up play there from Shu. He knows he's just going to be sitting in the trees there trying to get the deny off. He barely miscalculated. Like he, he probably only he only missed that kill by maybe ten damage. Oh yeah. And and I, I mean I love Johan. Johan's just Johan's just a state man. He's a good player. Oh, look at look at Abba's uh icon, his portrait with that cosmetic. God, that looks so cool. Oh uh, yeah, that's a spooky boy. He's definitely going for the, uh, the like the season cosmetics. <laughs> yeah, the here, Halloween you know? season. Gonna go get a pumpkin spice after this one. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's good. It's good. <laughs> How is uh, Zeus versus DP? Anything fancy here? One-sided matchup? It's a good I think, finesse matchup. I think Zeus, like, kind of struggles in this lane, to be honest. It's not the mm. it's not the worst, though, because he will just arc line top lane. Shoot, should be super bottom dead side. Here. Oh, man, Ooh, big ol' hit. Takes him down. First blood for Rutgers. Not feeling, not feeling too good after a loss, so they're going to start this one out strong, and you got to respect that. I mean, we looked at what they did last game, right? They had weak lanes. This lane, they picked strong lanes. So this is, <laughs> overall, it's a, probably just going to be a more comfortable draft for them. They're going to leave the Legion Commander solo in the top lane versus the Chaos Knight Abaddon. And I think, yeah, that's fine, to be honest. Ooh, However, upside. Once again, Rutgers coming back. The Horsemen. The the four horsemen of the apocalypse, dude. Isn't and that's isn't that Chaos Knight's lore? Speaking of lore, he is actually you know based on the four horsemen. His his mount's he's, name he's is Wrath Armageddon or whatever. Yeah, is there, is it, yeah, that's his mount's name is Armageddon, isn't it? Like actually, I don't yeah. know. I don't know about. And he lore. has a mount called Armageddon. I don't know if that's his actual mount. I think name. it is because he has a voice line for it. Oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. All right, bottom lane, we have a Tiny and a Lina. When is this lane going to start getting some kills? Level three, you think? It's kind of hard because Lifestealer can usually get the Rage off if he if he gets, uh, if he gets senses like the Light Strike array coming. Top lane, are they going to get Oh, here we go, again? rotation. I'm actually checking out bottom lane I'm right here. I'm watching bot two now. 
but I don't think okay here we go the magic missile comes out and we're seeing tiny under a lot of pressure tiny with his zero armor he drops man he needs a oh he has a stick I was like he needed like a wand or something but even he already used it up lane again Legion commander they're just constantly applying this pressure and I love oh, it oh Johan dude that's beautiful there they might go for this Ooh, Johan's getting a little he has little, no mana to deny the he's in trouble he's now not... mango pop there's the stun are we gonna see it do we have a chaos strike here he's waiting he's waiting oh not enough and now actually oh, oh! Ricky oh <laughs> my god <laughs> Seven hundred like gold SPU takes the lead. <laughs> no way. Bottom lane, Romelia goes out way too. He got tossed all the way under the tower and dies. I didn't. I was. I'm still just looking at the I, graveyard top. Like, <laughs> like they. There was just like Rutgers. They, you could tell. Like they were just. They were arguing about going for the kill, right? Oh. Like they had to be arguing about it, and then it just cost them both their lives. Uh -huh. Oh Dark Raider escapes gosh. a confrontation at the top rune, teleports to Shrine to get the bottom rune that she was defending. It's a regen. That's actually great for Dark Raider. Yeah. If I know anything about CSL, someone's going to clip that, and that's going to get posted immediately in the Rutgers Discord. It's I. It's actually already in the Rutgers Discord. <laughs> bottom lane, Tiny <laughs> caught out again. No armor. Oh, this False poor guy. Tiny's really supposed easily. to be the hero killer, not the hero getting killed. I mean, Vengeful Spear is pretty good against him, right? That extra mm -hmm. minus armor? He is. It's it's huge and and as a core tiny you're gonna be um like you're not gonna be going av just avalanche toss you want to have tree grab okay. for the lane harass and for the last hitting it's gonna uh, mean the tiny's gonna wait for level four or level five before he comes dangerous with his avalanche toss combo. Mm -hmm. Normally, uh, Bassy oh, is bottom. just like super value. Oop, the toss Ooh, all into the, way the back. tower into the LSA. That's the combo we wanted to see. Followed up with an avalanche and under tower, Vengeful's gonna drop, but the bounty rune is gonna get picked up by Shu and Tiny's in a very difficult position, less than 300 health. Great LSA from Lena though. We have a pursuit. Toss is up in a second. Are they gonna go for they it? Should have stayed on top of him. That you, you see life stealer in the lane there i think you absolutely on the lena just go in front of him and body blocked and wait for the tiny toss to come up and you just get that kill and the rune so a little bit because they can't really contest this lane venge is coming back and now uh it's they're just a little bit farther behind all right the triple lane here venge is in a great position oh no his teammates backed up though he's just gonna throw the magic missile hey remember me tiny top side though a little bit more of a confrontation Pulled back in. Legion Commander's quite tanky, but not tanky enough to fight these two off like she did so well earlier. Yeah, they she's want to pretty... go deep again. A little bit of hesitation, and rightfully so. I, I do like the moment of courage, press the attack. I feel like she could do better with two points and press the attack and only that one in overwhelming odds. It gives her just so much more regen in the lane. It goes from 30 to 40 per second, and yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh... Uh, I mean, you got uh, yeah. It's it's. I think Legion Commander is uh, one of those heroes like Vengeful Spirit, where you could skill her differently uh, almost every game. Yeah, I agree. Because um, just because of how strong her spells are, especially in lane. Uh, I think I'm the other thing to, to think does. about too is the uh, Legion Commander's overwhelming odds is really good against CK's ult. So maybe that's their thought yeah. process. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She and LC does get six, she has doesn't dual. Pick up dual. Doesn't pick it up, actually. She goes around it because uh, I don't think she expected to get a kill. In fact, though, she does so much damage. There's rotation from the mid player. That's a hasted death profit in the lane. Not TP coming out. out. Not going to be enough. Vengeful Spear rotates top, but she's not going to be able to save. A lot of lane. Break. Boom. They find the Tiny once more. Secure that kill with the gods. Thunder God's Wrath, and they're going to have to back up on the Lina. It, Tiny's really struggling. Tiny is, yeah. This he he does really well in this game if all he gets is levels, right? Because all he needs is this Avatos combo, and he can take down this mid lane Zeus. He can find the Venge. He can find the Skyrath. Like all of these heroes are super squishy, but he is level four, seven minutes into the game. Yeah, is he the support or is, is Lena the support? Lena's actually higher than him on uh, XP. Yeah, oh, poor guy. So we were talking about how Bristleback is a hero that if he has a rough early game, last game rather, Bristleback, if he had a rough early game, he struggles to catch up. If Tiny has a rough early game, is he going to struggle to catch up? I don't think so. He can be enabled pretty quickly from his allies, and he's really good at finding kills. And like I said, yes, be just because of how strong he is in this game in particular against the lineup from, the, from Stony Brook, I don't think he has too much to worry about. 
But uh, it is just going to take him longer to get there. Top lane, we yeah. see another TP coming in here from the Star okay, Mage. Okay, three from SVU. They want to find a kill. This is level 6 CK, though. Okay, on the CK, he has his shield. He's yeah, real ooh. tanky, and there is no duel. No duel yet. They're just going to bait out some spells. Death Prophet's coming top. They, Yeah, uh -huh. they see the rotation here thanks oh, to this boy. ward, so they're just going to back off. And this lets Dark Raider, he's left alone, but Zeus is not known for being a tower pusher. He this just gets is an invis in. prophet, so she is invis right now. They saw her pop it under the ward, so they do have yep. to be careful. They don't know exactly where she is, so they drop the sentry on the shrine just in case. Well, but they it's know where actually she's not. the mid lane. Dark Raider, careful. He can stay on hey. top of him. Dark Raider backs up knowing that this death prophet has to be here. Yeah, and Ab actually went high ground, but was not spotted by SVU. So, Chet, in the meantime, how's bottom lane going? This benefits the life stealer who's getting solo XP and he's not really threatened against two players, I imagine. Yeah, I I, th I think that's right. Yeah, but it is meaning Tiny is having some time to catch up. Actually, here we go. Teleport. Vengeful's here. Vengeful loves coming to this lane. Okay, going for the Lena. Gets the magic missile. Okay, we have an open wound. The great rage timing. They're gonna finish it off. Zeus will secure the kill. That's Dark Raider from the Fountain. Yeah, gets it himself. Top lane, he also put in some damage too, as they were, uh, they tried to play a little bit aggressive onto Chaos Knight. So he's gonna go ahead and pop the shrine here, take a little team shower with his friend Sneaky. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a saying we have, right? What's the saying? Tell me the saying. I don't know, I'm just saying that we have sayings, you know? We, I mean, if, if you're a general statement, we have sayings, I will not deny. That is a correct yeah. statement. Top side, more damage coming out on LC, but my man Shu is here in great position and keeping his distance. He never wants to be the target. He wants LC to be the target because LC is very tanky. Sitting up here, 10 wand charges, a bracer, throwing out the overwhelming odds. Yahan once again in trouble. This guy's been under half life more than he's been over half life. They have toss, he will. They're going to probably get this okay. bench. LSA misses. Dodge back. Is they gonna get, get the, the bounty? Oh, oh, yes. My God. And Remelia picks up the other one. That is 100% worth it. Yes. Absolutely oh, worth yes. it. Remelia oh, not really in trouble either. So happy to die for something. I mean, they got all four. They got all four bounty runes again. It looked okay. like these lanes were in favor for Rutgers, but there's a 1,000 gold lead for Stony Brook, right? Well, it's, yeah, it's it is still very close. We're gonna see. I think when the mid players are able to get more active, we'll really see. And at the moment, DP. Oh no, never mind. Dark Raider caught up. Both. I am nine. very surprised. Death Prophet is not popping Exorcism right now for this mid lane. I, like she needs to be shoving in with this catapult, just fording the wave with an exorcism and trying to to push that tower. Zeus can yeah. do a lot to de-push, but Veil vale now being on cooldown is like, I think that was what you needed to do. Yeah, and, and Zeus can't really deal with the catapult. He can deal with everyone else. Top lane, they found Shu. Outside a little action, Shu's the one they want. Overwhelming odds, still no duel. I think we're waiting for Mystic Flare before we see a point in duel. Yeah, that could be it. Oh, bottom side under tower, Tiny. I mean, he's got his ult now. Now he has zero plus 17 armor. That's what he was missing earlier. Oh, top lane, LSA on the mark. There it is. And he survived. Oh no, we've seen this before, Rutgers. Be careful. Don't chase too far. And he's going to make it out with the Jukes. Shoes on the side. Right now, SB is just having fun playing with Rutgers. He's looking but CK's for more. in a great position, especially with an ABBA behind him. LC, he's juking. He's going to make it out. Gets oh, the crit. They can dive shoot here now, now for sure. This now is easy to go. trouble going underneath. Double kill. Wow. See, that is a great dive. You have creeps here That's tanking the wave. You're doing great to just sit back on the supports. That's how you play that for sure. That was well, yep. that was well done. That's what we wanted. That's what CK wanted earlier on. Yeah. Uh, Lena picked up the book, so she's going to have Laguna Blade. And Midas is picked up on Remelia's Life Stealer. It's already popped. He's going to start farming very quick. Midas Radiance. Something's never changed. Farm, farm creeps fine. Farm I don't know if I fine. actually agree with the Midas Radiance this game. Why is that? I would have liked to see him go, uh, like, honestly, for just, like, an Armlet Deso. I think Armlet Deso is, is, like, pretty insane. I don't think it hits his job to deal with the Chaos Knight. Like, you have Zeus and, and Legion Commander. Uh -huh. If he just goes Armlet Deso, he just absolutely destroys the Wreckers lineup. Whoever he goes on just dies. Like, Armlet Deso, SNY, that whole build. Yeah. He just and, runs through. Uh, oh, hold on. We have some action here. There we go. Concussive shot's going to connect, but with a regen rune and in between towers, it's likely we'll see a rotation from Rutgers. 
Coming in from the top. Johan is in position. Now we see SBU getting surrounded. A swap it is going to come out. Swap. Nita dropping low. Doesn't get the Lagoon. A Dark Raider lights it up with the Thunder God's Wrath. Rutgers wants to try and turn. The Exorcism is popped. The shield is up. Shoo. Giving his life to save LC, but LC, she wants to fight. However, Exorcism is making it a precarious situation. Pushing them back, LC scares everyone on Rutgers away. Exorcism, again, has been used. We're going to see the team shower together. They're going to get the power together, and we might see them push together after this. They do have a smoke if they want to use it. I don't think they need to. They're just going to de-push top, go back to farming. Like you said, Vermilia really doing well in this game. I, I do like Chaos Knight. He just has Double Bracer Armlet. He's going to be coming online here very quickly. I, I don't think... I, I want to go back to the Lifestyle build. I don't think that Arm, like Midas Radiance is bad, right? It's never really a, a terrible build on Lifestealer. I just worry that Rutgers is going to come online very soon with a Chaos Knight that you won't be able to deal with. If uh, There we go. Speaking of Chaos Knight versus the uh, Lifestealer bottom uh, side. Dodge. Ooh! Disjoint, let's go, but the overwhelming odds immediately deals with CK ult. Swap him right back under tower. There is the, <clears throat> press the attack. No duel was able to get off, and now Johan is here for the save. Duel him, I the dare duel. you. Okay, there's the shield. Here comes the mist coil. They're lowering his armor, but they can't deal with them. Duel ends, magic missile comes out. It looks like we're gonna see CK fall. Yes, we do. Johan really wanted to be a part of that, but he pressed all his buttons. He's gonna go in with the borrowed time. Gets his auto attack and runs away. He wanted to do him. There we go, Dark Raider zooming in. Okay, can he finish him off? Is he gonna get this? Salving oh. up, actually. He'll be fine. And I guess Thunder God's Wrath, actually. He, ooh. Ooh. he wants it. He wants it back. Is he gonna is get this? Done. Oh my god, he's gonna get this. Dark Raider? Ooh. Oh, oh, he almost. I mean, Johan's baiting it, right? He was definitely yeah. baiting it. Yeah. Sneaky in the mid lane. Doing some damage to the tier one, which I like. I like. I like. This is gonna be a rough scenario. CK. We Once talked again, about bottom odds being really good. Against this hero. Great rage. I'm happy that Vengeful and Lifestealer are playing together. Yeah. I think they make a great combo. And now they're securing runes together. Shu's gonna snake this one top too. There's a swap, but uh, that's not gonna work out. Ah, uh, an easy kill there. He was trying to swap the Lina down close enough for a Legion duel, but CK showed up and he was just like, nope, you on your own, dog. <laughs> not, uh, not happening today. Well, Romelia's playing quite a bit, of, uh, quite aggressively here with a Midas as his item. You think he's in trouble? Not he's really. He can reliably him. rage, right? Unless Lena gets an LSA from Fog and then he gets like four seconds stunned by Ke Chaos Knight. I only has one point in Chaos Bolt, so like max two seconds stun. Uh, yep. It's unlikely that he dies. He does have Legion Commander, which like if Legion's staying anywhere near him, he just survives. Yep. Legion Commander is going to play a very large role this game for S, uh, for SVU. And with Mystic Flare picked up, uh, it uh, is, should be an easy way to win duels once yeah. uh, we see them playing together. 25% XP gain talent as well on the Legion is huge. Scarath Mage also has an XP gain talent at 10, so once she grabs that, that hero becomes so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, XP talents are just make flank support a breeze. Okay, we have a lot of heroes bottom. They're near each other, but we haven't engaged yet. Sneaky's gonna be the first one up, leading the charge, followed up by three heroes on Rutgers. In the meantime, mid lane XP is getting soaked up by Tiny, who's still trying to recover from a difficult bottom lane. Yes, Rutgers is gonna make a push out bottom. Sneaky's gonna come in. We have a blink on Tiny. Once he gets mad, I think he's gonna want to be active. However, he has revealed his blink dagger to SVU. There we go. Speaking of reveal, Thunder God's Wrath is gonna catch Rutgers in SVU's jungle. A pursuit from SVU. However, I don't think they have a way to catch just yet. Yeah, they're gonna find Alina. Side by the rune, or we might see Lena die. <laughs> Lena's is interrupted by a saving toss. Respect the play. That was beautiful. That was nice. That was nice. Mid lane. Mid -lane. Here we go. Uh, the uh, oh my god, we're having all the ult pop. And we're gonna have a duel win from LC. Exorcism's a scary wow. spell to duel into, but LC with her team there, she you know no fear. That's a moment of courage, you could say. Dark Raider does so much damage, like so much damage against the Death Prophet, and without your you know Abaddon behind you, that you're not gonna survive that. They don't have, yeah. this is another situation where they, like Rutgers doesn't have an offlaner who's gonna, or a hero that's just gonna build these team fight items. Yeah. Right, you look at, you look at SBU, like, and Legion's got a drums. I don't know what he's queuing up next. I would expect to see like Ooh. a Vlad's or a pipe. A little bit of action mid lane. We might see Dark Raiders, Dark Raiders tossed. He's swapped, he's staying alive. He actually is gonna get cleaned up right at the end of shared bounty. Trading Dark Raider for Tiny. 
I think that is definitely They're looking for more. Rutgers. Now, this the fight is... hasn't ended yet. CK leading the charge. A huge overwhelming odds. Going to put Lena on the back line. And Elsie facing off with the creeps and the heroes. Pushing them away. A low health mid tower from SBU is in trouble. Elsie wants to defend it. She gets pulled in. She gets silent. She's stunned. She's in a lot of trouble. There's no saves remaining for oh, SBU. Gets but Elsie barely. Up, makes it away. Continues to throw the overwhelming odds. Uh... Once again. CK is getting held back, however, on the backside, his team manages to clean up the tier one tower. CK is not in any trouble. Great play from Rutgers. Yeah, I really like that aggression just to secure that tower. They absolutely need it. Bottom lane, I think Romelia got one as well. Yeah, he gets bot tower at the same time, so. Romelius is playing his own game, and I think he's going to be extremely scary and difficult for Rutgers to deal with unless they're able to stop him. He is getting close to Radiance. He already has the Midas. It's been working uh, very well for him for quite some time. I think uh, Romelia might have a similar similar game as last game on his Juggernaut, where he just gets left alone. He farms, and once he starts showing up to fights, well, he just starts showing showing up and taking uh, Rutgers down. They just smoked up on the side of Rutgers, by the way. Okay, that's what I want to see. This is what Tiny wants to do, but it was just delayed. He's just running around low mana, constantly needed to be running around the map. Now he's finally in a position to make a play. He's rolling out with Alina and an ABBA. Let's they actually, uh, accomplish. they scanned and caught Zeus as he was running by, but he, they don't know which direction he went, because they don't have vision here until they just plopped down that ward. Zeus waiting, gonna walk Zeus is in trouble, maybe? Right now. Zeus walks right and don't even need the blink. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's... That's what you want. But on right the there. back side, we're gonna have DP taken out. That's a dual one with Mystic Flare. A lot committed from SBU. Let's see if they want to stick around. He'll get shoot. He gets here. caught. He's getting taken out. He actually survives the Laguna, but you know he he goes down. But that's not the worst for SBU. She was definitely expendable, especially if he's used his ultimate. Now Remelia is here. Damage, right? Like that's pretty solid. Yeah. Um, very Ooh, close to Radiance, here, I think Romelia does not want to commit to this fight. Rutgers looking to pick up Legion Commander in the mid lane, and just below him they want to go for an LC. Ultimate pop from CK. Oh, LC really wants to hit the overwhelming odds, but he, but uh, Tiny's doing a great job zoning LC away from the illusion. They find this LC, it's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Tiny combo comes out, now they have a shrine to TP2, LC goes oh right gosh. for the keep, she knows that Rutgers Chaos is not going to follow lane. her. Almost killed the, uh... Uh, and Dark Raiders in the mid lane too. There we go. We got the Veil. She's teleporting in. It looks like we may have a retreat from Rutgers. Do they want to try and take a fight? Because we know SBU does. Drums We're are scouting. popped. Radiance is picked up. Okay, LC gets turned on. Now, LC's going to drop under the Mystic Flare. CK is forced to escape. LC is dropped. Vengeful in trouble, but SBU's not too worried because that got Romelia in the fight. Now he's in a position to take out the Tiny. He drops him up at the top rune, however. You see, was that a Chaos Knight die? Wow, fantastic yeah. pickup from SBU. Next up, Johan is on the menu, and he is taken down. One for three. Okay, and with the Radiance up, I don't think this mid tower is going to last much longer. Yeah, I'd agree. 3,000 gold lead now here for SBU. Both bot runes still on the map, though. I think, yeah, Ostrovsky should be able to head down here and grab both of these. I feel that Romelia can do whatever he wants now. He's just he's just terrifying for Rutgers to deal with. He's gonna go pressure lanes and he's gonna kind of feel the same position as Chu last game where he shows up to a lane and just says, What are you gonna do? You don't have a single hero that can stop me. You need to bring friends and that's gonna make space for my team everywhere else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a uh Atos obviously queued up on the Scarf Mage and he does have it completed. <laughs> yep. So that's some catch. A big item for them. Coming in. Here we lane, go. The we blink. got a blink, we got a duel, we got a flare. Was there a carry there? Uh, not that I know. Oh, no. Ricky, CK is the scariest carry, scariest hero for Rutgers right now, and he just got vaporized by SBU. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of damage. Scarath Mage, uh -huh. 1,100 damage. I mean, when you when you factor <laughs> in the spell amp from this veil plus his arcane yep. seal, it's absurd. Yep. It is bottom it's lane. They're That's finding us. Like, if they find Romelia, it's a big deal. Romelia's but... the one chasing away three Rutgers heroes right now. Rutgers isn't even aware of the teleports on the shrine, although they can assume. No, they saw him. Oh, they have a deep ward there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they... yeah, you are correct. Yeah, they got a deep ward, so that's why they backed out. And Manta on Lifestealer, so that is to deal with uh, Silence. Oh, and the blink barely misses Legion Commander. Oh, my God. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, Death Prophet's coming. He does have Aghanim Scepter. He pops the drums just to make sure he gets away. Hey, game slowed down just a little bit, but SPU is still the team in control, just like last game. 
Rutgers already achieved more kills than they did last game and a smaller net worth lead. Are we going to see something happen? Tiny's hitting some creeps. He wants to get that Echo Saber. That's going to add more damage to his uh, bursty combination of Avalanche Toss and a double beatdown. Yeah, I think at this point in the game, your Abaddon pretty much has to be sitting behind your uh, Chaos Knight in lane. I, I don't think he can afford to to be that far out. They do see yeah. him place the ward there. On the they don't actually see him, but they know he did. Uh, they smoked up in the mid lane. Ooh, mid lane. Blink in, Mystic Flare, Tiny. Ooh, he's vengeful style point swaps. The swap shoes Skyrath mage to get in range for the mystic or for the magic, magic missile. missile. Secure the dual that damage. That was slick as heck. Yeah, they're they're feeling themselves. SPU is playing really well. This is you know he's just smiling right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because <laughs> I'm smiling after that play. He's also about to get a free D ward gold here, so he's happy about that one. Look at this. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah, that feels good. Oh yeah, poor Rutgers, forced back. Behind the river, SVU is slowly taking map control just by being the most dangerous team. Rutgers ha or SVU has a ton of damage, but they're also not that easy to kill. Legion Commander we've seen constantly is 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 really causing Rutgers to extend far in order to to uh, even attempt to kill her. And and then they have to back that up. They have a save from Vengeful Spirit. Uh, I don't think Dark Raider's really been in any trouble this game, except for the smoke that he unfortunately walked into. He does have two deaths, uh, but his positioning is great, and he's just, you know, he's just there to press his, uh, press his ultimate while the rest of his team does all the dirty work. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have to do much other than help secure kills, and he can just farm, you know, the rest of his team's a gank squad. The, the Legion Commander and um, Skyrath Mage is just so deadly. Now here they well, do see the rotations coming over. Actually, yeah, he's D game coming these. out. Shoes concussive, unfortunately he hits the Hellbears. Oh yeah, feels good. Yes, because they Yaha, just placed a refresh man. ward. It's four hundred gold for one sentry. That is value. Johan's happy. Johan's so happy with that, and I'm happy about it too. Yeah, that's like a solid percentage of his entire net worth. Is <laughs> those two wards that he just he killed. just doubled his last hits. No, I'm just faking that out. <laughs> well, uh, we have a heart picked up on CK. Now that is an item. However, is there a hero that likes to hit uh, people who bought heart in this game? Yeah, I would also say turn your attention to the level 15 talent there off Zeus. Okay, let me turn my attention to the level 15 talent. Ooh, yeah, baby. Well, speaking of life stealer, he's looking to steal some lives bottom. Duel comes out. Do they have the damage to, to get the dual damage? Well, Mystic Flare, they definitely do. Teleport down from Ava, but it's too late. And near the shrine, we have some more action. They're just going to blink out. They, they can't take these fight with a dead They're running knight. from Vengeful. Or rather, Rutgers running from Vengeful. This is a very aggressive support. Yeah, I mean, I know I know Chaos Knight's queuing up the BKB, oh, but there's boy, just... SBU's lineup is so good at finding kills right now that it is... You can't just, like, farm a lane. Uh, and you can't really, like, show in the lane for more than a couple seconds. And Chaos Knight, absolutely terrible hero at lane clearing. Like, he needs to be jungling, he needs to be your Lina, that needs to be pushing the lanes. Um, she needs to be the one, like, just LSA Dragon slaving the lanes, and your sick kid needs to be in the jungle. Yeah. It's it's too a, risky. It, it's, it's... Smoke up in the mid lane? They're they're going to go right for here on the, on the shrine. You oh, see here we Shu? go. Smoke's popped. Con custom shots used. Chaos Knight's coming back in. They might try and toss him in, but I don't know if Rutgers can catch him. Till one. Is rude. There's the Avalanche. Oh my god, and the Mystic Flare turn with the Atos. They don't even get the save, too, on Shu. Oh my god, is Rutgers not going to get anywhere? A custom nah, shot. should get the Vengeful Spear getting taken out. No LSA. They didn't know that he was TPing right there. Great play by Shu. Rutgers does just managed to pick up the Vengeful, but in exchange for a Tiny, that definitely favors SVU. Oh, yeah. And this whole time, Vermilia TP top right after they get the Tier 2 bottom. He, he's gotten three waves currently of, ex of farming experience. He's going to clear out the jungle. And he's like halfway to an AC almost. Uh, this is... They're just pl making their rotations really well. There's it's beautiful Dota. Oh my god. That Thunder God's Wrath just scouted what was going to be a gank for sure on the Lifestealer top, but now that they know there's no Thunder God's Wrath, they turn it right into a Roche instead. So Lifestealer gonna try and scout this out. And he yeah. will. But this thing dies so fast. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of damage coming out on Roshan. This is what Rutgers needs to get back into it. They're struggling to play the map because of the control SBU has. Ooh, great overwhelming odds. They go uh, in. Lifestealer, oh, you need to be very careful get here. It. 
They have okay, high ground vision or no? Ult, Here we go. We're going to have a shoe blown up on the Skywrath Mage. Now Ramelia's getting chased, but a fantastic disjoint. Oh with my god, that swap. Keep him alive a little bit longer. Vengeful will swap him out and trade his life. Definitely the play you want to make, keeping your position one alive. All right, that was a beautiful play by Rutgers. They just got themselves mm -hmm. like 3,000 gold back. Some good map position. They have an Aegis on your Chaos Knight here, so it's uh, it's this is unlikely. This I want to see. Yeah, like they just made a good. It was a really good play call for sure. Yeah. And now CK is not the best Aegis carrier, but he's definitely better than Life Stealer stealing it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Death Prophet's not any better, though, to be honest, you know? Like, like, you're right, she... yeah, they're both heroes that rely on their all. Ooh, your Courier? It might die here, and it does. Yep, sneaky, sneaky. Killed. He's got to be careful. He has no blink and TP no, not available for 15 seconds. If uh -oh, they get uh -oh. vision uh -oh. on him here, which they oh, do. Oh, no, man. For the Courier, he gets caught. Is it yeah. worth it anymore? Probably not. It's it's hard to say, right? That Courier, yeah, I don't. Tough. did it have anything on it? It had like, a ward, I believe. A ward and something else. Yeah, so it's... It's nice to get the courier, but uh, he actually dies for it, which is kind of unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to see from Rutgers with this Aegis? Are they they just want to get back into this game for the most part, which they're doing an excellent job of doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to have BKB soon. Tiny actually decided to turn that what was going to be Echo Saber into a BKB, which I'm perfectly fine with. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chaos Knight has both the BKB and the Blink queued up. I think BKB makes more sense to me. He can just train, like tunnel one target and just secure that they die. Um, yeah. And then going for a Blink later this game is for sure the play. He can just Blink up on top of the Zeus, Blink onto the back line, and, and try and take down pretty much any unit. So I really like the Blink plays for CK. I think it's one of my favorite late game items on this hero. Yeah. And yeah, he has his heart, he has his armlet, he's carrying an Aegis, he's very scary right now. Get him onto the front line with a Blink Dagger. They have Beautiful. everything up right now too. CK's ult's only 8 seconds away, so they're just going to group up and push with this Aegis, sit behind that Chaos Knight. And you don't want to have to pop the, the ultimate before your Aegis. If you don't mind losing the Aegis, then popping the Phantasm. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see a defense from SVU. No, they're, they're fine letting them take this. We saw last fight how much damage this Death Prophet did with that ultimate and the Aghanim Scepter. She has a BKB now completed, the 500 health talent. She is super tanky. Chaos Knight, are you going to find this Legion? She blinks back the other direction, so barely survives. That was a nice juke from him. Well, Rutgers is in a position where they're they're not as uh, afraid as SBU as they have been early on. Big part of that is Tiny showing up. A bit, the biggest part of that is definitely the CK and uh, um, Death Prophet becoming very dangerous. CK finishes Blink actually, but he they're they're, they're going to play super aggressive. This is Rutgers timing for sure. They are definitely stronger than SBU. They've got the BKB on uh, Death Prophet, the Blink Aegis on Chaos Knight. They just want to play really aggressive and five man. If they're getting picked off, that's pretty much exactly what SBU wants. So they're just gonna try and split push, force the lanes out. As you can see, Legion Commander showing mid lane and the uh, Life Stealer showing top. They're just applying as much pressure as possible to force Rutgers to respond. But uh, Rutgers, and, and they Rutgers want their own objectives. There's, there's someone behind Remelia. There's no way he'd be doing this. Oh yeah. Okay. So they're gonna train two for one on towers. Remelia pushes fast by himself, though, but we have a whole Rutgers crew bottom. Yeah, Tiny actually TPing to the shrine here. It looks like he wants to fight in the mid lane instead. CK TPing into the trees. Blinks on the high ground. He wants to find them, but he's got to be careful. He doesn't mind expending this Aegis if it forces them to fight here, because you can TP in. Oh. He's going to see... In. Skyrath's invisible, actually. Is that a Glimmer Cape? Oh, it's just a Shadow Amulet. All right, we'll get one. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they got a Vengeful. It's better than not getting anything. Yeah. They all, uh, Rutgers did expend Fortification. They secure Still their... Two, they don't lose the Tier here. 2 mid, though. And Tier 3 top didn't take too much damage. Yeah, they... Uh, right when the Creep Wave got there, the Fortification came out from Rutgers, defended the mid Tier 2 and the top Tier 3. It's actually a very valuable Fortification. So Tiny has BKB, queuing up the Echo Saber as his next item. I, I don't know if I like the Echo or the... Ags more this game it's hard to say they don't really have a lot of like aoe lockdown that like justifies the agonim scepter so I th if i think about it that way i, I kind of do like the echo saber more where you just try and get that single target kill 
Yes, I I feel though that Echo it's it's. Do you think it's late for Echo Saber now? Tiny is one of those heroes where it's. I think it's always fine. I guess he's hitting for 272 damage. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's the difference of it's basically like giving him another spell in, in the in yes. essence as far as damage goes. So I think yeah. it's fine. Smoked up in the mid lane here. SBU infested into the Legion Commander. They just want to find there themselves a kill, but uh, they will eliminate anyone they find. But the question is, are they going to find anyone? They're circling the tri the triangle here. So they're they're assuming like someone's got to be here, but they're showing bot. So they oh they might find low value kill but they find a kill i mean they don't get the duel here and they don't even get it that's the alt okay now on the sideline we have rutgers coming in bkb committed abba is gonna drop Do we see a high ground push from sbu no we see a from the high ground push from rutgers tiny in but he's by himself that's his bkb as soon as it ends he's in trouble if vengeful dies sbu is okay they're gonna swap ck gets hit by the tree sword Swap Oof. again. <laughs> I mean, he's trying to get him as far away from his team as possible. And that's the tip. You know, I mean, you force the buyback on a Baden, you get a kill. Um, or, like, you trade for a kill, you force the 10 second BKB of the Tiny. I think that was the 10 second BKB of the Legion as well. Yeah, so the two 10 second BKBs. But CK is going in deep here. He's ready to fight. Yeah, he's got his Phantasm up. He needs to get as much value out of it as he can. I, no, that's not even his Phantasm. Yeah, it is. Oh, no, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. He has like Blink, it. so if if someone shows up, he, he can Blink Phanta or blink uh, Reality Rift and pull those illusions forward, which is really scary. Uh-huh. Well, the Fortification is used. There we go. Romelia's coming in. We have a Tier 3 Tower Fall from SBU. Well, the sides are are switched, and this time Rutgers is going to be the aggressor for the high ground. First tier three tower to fall. Like I said, I think this is Rutgers' timing. They're very strong right now. They just got to keep playing around that. They got well. They have to play around their cooldowns. I I I, I suppose that's that's more accurate. Because now you're gonna see SBU wants to group and they want to find a kill. There's no exorcism. There's no. Uh, uh, Phantasm, so they, they can definitely get this tier 2 mid most likely. I would expect Rutgers to start trying to push these side lanes, but you always have to be afraid of that Legion Commander plus, you know, whoever. And they're actually pinging out. They see Sneaky here. Okay. They're just gonna yeah, yeah, SBU. Immediately trying to make a counterplay. Little Roshan check. Roshan timer will be revealed to us in 13 seconds. Now, in the in the hyper late game, is there a team that you're favoring? It's hard to say. I mean, the scaling potential of SBU's lineup is really good. Skyrath just keeps doing more and more damage. Yeah, I mean, every single one on their team gets really strong. The problem is, is I don't know if they ever win team fights. Uh, the team fight coming out from Rutgers, I think, is just better if they can manage to stay not too Oh, the scan? Ooh, the Thunderdolls dropped the Agnum. Okay, they don't need team fights if they're going to get the solo pickoffs. That's huge. That's huge. I was going to say, they scale really well on the side of SBU, and I, I think the damage output might be enough to help secure the game, whereas Rutgers is going to struggle a little bit more when it comes to taking down these heroes like Legion Commander and Lifestealer. I think those two are going to be the problem. Zeus can like get his spell combos off and die, and it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah, he just wants to hit buttons, as many buttons as he can before he dies. Okay, high ground push. They're going to uh, go for a buyback on Death's Prophet. Death's Prophet does have Exorcism. If she buys back, he wants to hold it, though, to get the Shivas. I can't imagine they, they buy back for this. Actually, CK just finds Vengeful Spear on the back end. He's got to be really careful. Has Phantasm. This one's not the kill they want. Now we have a Zeus Eggs coming out. Okay. Fighting near the shrine. We're going to uh, see Vengeful SBU Spirit start backing up on the side. Vengeful will go down. CK going in. Trying to make a play on Romelia, but he's not doing any damage. Tiny commits to BKB. Mystic Flare, they're stacking up. But we're going to see CK go down with no buyback. Ricky, SBU is in a great position. Tiny this is sneaky, though. Ten, drop, this is BKB Death Prophet. Death Prophet with the BKB. He's not afraid of anything. However, his team is. He's the only one left. Ricky, SBU is rolling over them. That's what happened? Game. Ricky, that's the uh, game. It's actually just game. Yeah, game's Did over. Work. They just took a really bad fight outside the base. Look at, and look at LC. Oh, I thought he was yeah, going to Yeah, he's going to buy a Deso. Yeah, I was like, they're just going to end the game, go tier 4, yeah. 100%. Oh my gosh, Ricky. You cannot slip up against SBU. These guys have been to the main stage grand, 
where these guys have been on the main stage at the grand final event two years in a row. If you wow. give them an inch, they'll take a kilometer, as my Canadian friends say. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that. I've heard that uh, that saying before. <laughs> wow, Ricky. Wow. Wow. I mean, <laughs> we we were just discussing that Rutgers was going to attempt to not buy back so they could uh, save their money for the next team fight, and well, what that next went out fight? the window. Yeah. What, what next team fight? I. Uh, I mean, that's 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 the SBU that I wanted to see. That right there. That I think of everything that happened tonight, the best part being being reunited with you for Collegiate Dota. Aww. The second best thing was that last team fight. Like that's SBU. You go. You just do. You make you one little slip up, and they just overturn everything. They take out your team. They dissect you, and then they dissect your base. That is a two zero <laughs> victory. Over Rutgers, uh, not a pushover team, by the way. Like, no, but, like Rutgers is a solid team, and Stony Brook made it look easy. I, I don't think this one was a draft issue. Like I said, I, I think game one was definitely a draft issue for Rutgers. This game was 100% winnable for them. Yes. But the problem that they had is the, the couple fights that they took when they had their abilities up, they didn't get enough out of it, I think, because, like we said, the scaling factors from SBU, this, this late-game Legion, this late-game Lifestealer, um, and just the raw damage output from Venge and Zeus is, or I'm sorry, uh, Zeus and Skyrath is insane. Like there's so much damage coming out. And once those BKBs start to expire or get shorter durations, you can't win the fights without bursting down a hero. And that burst potential is pretty much gone late game. You can maybe take down Skyrath and, and Venge, but Zeus, Lifesteal, or Legion, matter. all going to be way too tanky. And once you've burst that hero, you're, you're pretty much blowing your whole combo because you're... That, yeah, that's the story of Tiny pretty much, right? You hit your buttons, and then you have 22 seconds before you get to hit your buttons again. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, SBU, they took one really good engagement. I think that last fight was more of an, a mistake on Rutgers than it was necessarily like outplay was from art. SBU. Death Prophet's like, respawn was like 10 seconds off, and Chaos Knight blinked into the back line without BKB and without Phantasm up, and it just he had them available but didn't pop them and so Zo venge doesn't die right venge doesn't die right away and then the fight kind of just cascades after that um it sbu is it's 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 commendable how well sbu adapted to the ck finding an opening going in and sbu just reevaluates what they want to do and in like a second and they just dismantle uh Rutgers outside their base before the high ground push to win the game it was beautiful and you're talking about the burst and i think a big part of it too is we saw tiny get a blink at a decent timing after his difficult start however mm -hmm. he got a blink and he couldn't do anything with he got a blink with an empty mana bar and then he got into a fight that they that uh, Rutgers didn't initiate and then when he finally got to use his blink it was i believe about two and a half three minutes after he picked it up and you yeah. know you get blink and it's like you get a blink you want to get a kill you want to reveal your blink by holding the head of your enemy with it. And he reveals his blink by farming creeps. Mount the head on the dagger. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, however, let's talk about, real quickly, a beautiful play by SBU. No one is going to deny that. And if you do say that You're to my man. face on LAN. Yeah. Rutgers started off, they played well in game one, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough. Game two, they stepped it up. Better draft, better play. They were the first team to take a tier three high ground tower. Yeah, they looked and good. the kills were much closer this game. Yeah, 26 to 20. 37 minute game as opposed to a 30 minute game. But, and then SBU takes it. And that's why those boys are on the power rankings. Rank one, baby. Yeah, I agree. It was just really well played. Final thoughts for today. I know we uh, we have a few things we want to say, but uh, any uh... my final thoughts. I'm just happy to be back. I'm happy to be back here casting Collegiate Dota. I'm ecstatic to be here with you, and I saw oh, yeah. very uh, just a ton of familiar faces in uh, Twitch chat when I had it open earlier, and it brought a massive smile to the second most beautiful face on your screen right now. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm just excited to cast games and interact with everyone, and I think we're gonna have a great year. What you got? Any final thoughts, Ricky? Yeah, I mean, I just want to echo that. It's it's really fun um, coming back this year and seeing, like you said, all the familiar faces, everyone we've been hanging out with, playing Dota with, casting games for for the last year. And it's just going to be that much better this year. It, the CSL community, the Collegiate Dota community is just so much fun. So thank you all for being here and, and enjoying 
you know, our cast and enjoying these games. We have a blast doing it. Um, before we take off, though, uh, like I said, this at the you start got of the stream, a little extra. We uh, we have a new sponsor. So hit them, hit them yeah, with the sponsor. Our, our actual sponsor this year, currently GameStop. So I just want to say thank you for them. Obviously, it's thank amazing you, for, Yeah, amazing for them for partnering with CSL for this uh, season. Help activate that uh, collegiate esports community um you can visit uh, gamestop.com slash esports for more details about uh their brand new performance center as well as their like gaming clinics and stuff like that, that they've put on um but uh something fun that is also new to this season is the gamestop uh weeklies so it's like a it's like a series of essentially like community oriented tournaments so for a bunch of different games that you can just kind of tune in and play in these are going to be from november through march and they're going to be in a whole bunch of games. So if you're a Dota fan, but you like to play other games as well, you can tune in for those. They're going to be League of Legends, TFT, CSGO, Overwatch, Madden, Rocket League, Hearthstone, and Smash Ultimate. So I know we got a lot of Smash of fans. Yeah, it's a lot of games. We got. I know we have a ton of Smash fans in the crowd here as well. So check those out. They'll be a lot of fun. You can meet new people from cross games that you know you never thought you would have. But uh, That's the best part about CSL. Meet really people is, you man. never would have met otherwise. I agree. I agree. That's so. It's so wild, man. It's so wild. Uh, congratulations, SBU, undefeated with the season so far, two zero currently, um, and they take a second two zero victory over their opponents. So they're looking real spicy, real mm -hmm. spicy. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on these guys. They're hot as hell. Yeah, that's gonna do it for us here tonight. That's it. Collegiate Star League Week One, Dota Two. It's been a blast. Thank you all for yes, watching. It has. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Ricky, it's great to be back working with you, man. Miss you. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Cut it. Cut it.